Stop recording. Oh, it works this time. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Welcome everyone to Gamers Breakfast. My name is Scoy School. I got with me here my co-host Jal Bagel and our special guest today, Banshee. Oh my goodness. Welcome everyone. So for those who don't know, uh Banshee actually why don't you introduce us a little bit? Like, tell us a little about yourself, because I don't know honestly much about you other than you've worked on some incredible um, stuff for the past few years, and yeah. I want to hear more about it. Um, yeah, so I'm a casual sp slash part uh, time streamer on Twitch. I started really recently, end of June. Uh, I obviously shared a common uh, focus on Monster Hunter. Uh, with a bit of variety here and there. I do art and then, yeah, outside of social media and content creating, I work full time as a VFX artist in the movie and television industry. So, yeah. Which is so very cool. Incredibly awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a cool job. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's yeah. Glamour. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. Because you worked on the, uh, the Monster Hunter, the live action Monster Hunter movie that was out. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I worked on that for, well, the project was on for a little bit over a year for us at the studio, but I worked on at two different timelines on the project. So I worked really early on when it started, then I had a break on the project and then I came back on it uh, towards the end when it was in, in crunch time. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Like, What part of it did you work on exactly? Uh, so at the very beginning, I was part of the concept art team. So it was a lot of uh, basically establishing the look with just uh, images before the actual 3D process began on the project. Uh, so it's basically just to lock in uh, how the environments look before we would actually trigger them for the whole time of the project. So my main implication on the movie was on the desert area. So uh, I was part of the team that helped design it, take elements here and there from the reference that were gathered from the games. And then once that was approved, uh, both by the studio, the investors, but also Capcom, then it went on to production to actually make the whole digital environment because the deal with Monster Hunter, uh, they shot everything on location. They went to uh, Cape Town, I think, in oh, really? uh, South Africa. Yeah. And they shot everything there. But the thing is, is as soon as you have interaction with CG things, which were the monsters, you have to recreate the entire environment in which they're, they're interacting with. So we have to basically redo everything. So yeah, I was involved at the very beginning to help develop the, the look for the desert. And then towards the end, just like finish up, uh, finishing up the <clears throat> shot for the movie, and yeah. yeah, that's awesome. That's so cool. That's very cool. Oh, yeah. my goodness. <laughs> did you did you have like uh, like your your attraction or your interest to in Monster Hunter before working on the movie, or did like the movie instigate that? It was really close together. So I started uh, playing World at launch on console. And so that was January 2018, right? Yeah. That yeah. It, yeah. And I was hired at Mr. X, which is a studio, in May 2018. And then I didn't start working on the project until 2019. So I, I dived right in the world. Uh, I became obviously a hard die fan. Yes. <laughs> and um, I will always remember the day at the, at the studio where they basically send like a general uh email to the entire studio all across uh all locations and the email had like a banner at the top and it was like rathalos uh <laughs> on, just like a, a style render of rathalos and it was saying like work on monster Hunter is about to begin and that's how i learned that we had the project i didn't even know at that point that was gonna be a movie and i just lost my shit and i went like, <laughs> around the studio we were like 50 at that point i was like dude if i can work on this i don't care like i will patch up like a monster shit in the background that's like two people yeah. wide. Like, <laughs> anything i will work on anything for this project i just want to be able to say that i worked on it and Ultimately, my implication on it became like way bigger than what I would have even just be happy with. Mm -hmm. But um, it was crazy. And it was like, it was the biggest project going on at that time. It was the most important project that the studio had going on for many years. It was really, um, 
it was a project like the the founder co-founder and co-owner of the studio was on it as a producer it was like a big big thing it's very cool uh, so yeah cool. people were just even people that weren't fans were just so on board because the thing is is um the studios in the VFX industry, as much as possible, they kind of specialize themselves in something, whether it's like car chase or digital environments or creatures and whatnot. And Monster Honor, uh, if you dissociate yourself a bit from what it actually is, um, for us artists, it's a huge opportunity to just show creature work mm -hmm. and how we can just make like really amazing monsters and their animations and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, as far as opportunity goes, projects like that don't come your way really often. So no. people were mm -hmm. just really, really on board with it. It was really cool. That's so yeah. exciting! Holy shit! Yeah. And the best part yeah, of the, the movie, first time. Oh, sorry. oh no! Actually, go go ahead, Skoy. <laughs> I was gonna say the best part of the movie was absolutely for sure, like the monsters itself, like the the way they looked and the way they interacted with everything. They looked so good in that movie. Oh yeah, I was uh, it was just nuts. Like I remember just a period of my of my time there where I don't know, the feeling of being excited to wake up in, in the morning and like go to work and see uh like there was at least an hour in my day where I would just go on the servers and just like scroll down what people would publish, whether it's like latest animation for this shot or like latest effects and seeing like Rathalos breathing fire and stuff and seeing the evolution from like day one till when we delivered it was just crazy. Oh, so you had all crazy, the insights crazy. for it. Yeah, yeah, That's actually. Uh, <laughs> um, like, so the way that the studio works is at the time there was three different locations, the headquarters being in Toronto, me, I was working in Montreal and there's one in Bangalore and uh, usually they try to keep a project to like one location just because it's easier to to manage and supervise that way. Mm -hmm. But given Monster Hunter had 1300 VFX shots, which is crazy, a crazy amount. That's they insane. Had to yeah, they had Dude. to split that between all the locations that we had. Uh, so there was a point where me wanting to work on Monster Hunter got to toronto and i was officially <laughs> referred as like the montreal girl that wants to <laughs> work on monster <laughs> um so, so they awesome. gave me yeah they gave me access to the project before i even started working on it just because they wanted me to be able to like look at things and look how the project was evolving and so sometimes people would come at my desk and they would be like so i heard You've been given access to my sonar. Can you show me something <laughs> What's going on? And I was like, yeah, sure. Let's take like 10 minutes and look at stuff. So that's super yeah. cool, actually, that like yeah. you were kind of, you know, identified as this uh, more or less expert on the on the uh, yeah. uh, on the subject material. That's really neat. It was like a dream come true. And there's two instances even where um, <clears throat> When I came back to work uh, on the projects towards, not the end, but like the middle of production, um, I sent like an email to my supervisor and my producer and I said, I have a PS4 and I have the game. If you guys want, I can just bring in a certain day at work. And if there's people that work on the show that want to be more familiar with it, I can showcase the game. And I ended up, Indeed, bringing my PS4 and hooking it up in one of the <laughs> dailies room, which is basically where we review our work. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like our home theater with like a huge projector and everything. So oh we we plugged the game on there and I played for like an hour and the supervisor was like, OK, show me like the biggest monster that's in this game. I didn't show Zora because I thought it was boring. So I showed <laughs> Zenojiva. Um, Probably and, a good call. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Being honest. Be like, where's the monster? You're like, well, you're on it. <laughs> He's the mountain. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I thought Zara was not really um I don't know, wouldn't do the game justice to to yeah. show him. But um yeah, and then people were like, Can I try? I was like, sure, you can attempt to play the game, but like <laughs> when you 
when you put someone like in the middle of a tempered Black Diablo's quest and you just like oh, hear yeah. try the game, try the game. <laughs> <laughs> with a great Figure sword too, you're like, okay. <laughs> and then after two seconds, they're like, I don't fucking get it. Take the controller back. You're like, sure. <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not quite the pick up, put down game. <laughs> no, it's, it's hard to, you can't just say, oh, I'm just going to swing my sword and like probably do shit. Like, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> it takes an adjustment phase. Yeah, for um, yeah. sure. But yeah, it was That's definitely really like a, a honeymoon on that project for sure, for sure. Oh my gosh, just I'm like I just can't imagine like you. Uh, that's so cool being able to work on something that you love and being paid for it as well, and just going out to these <laughs> different locations and you're just like I'm literally like I could just be here for free and I'll be happy. Like kind of situation. <laughs> and... That would have paid them to work on it. <laughs> Yeah, right. I got paid. Hell yeah. yeah! I have to pay to be here. It's like no, we're paying you. It's like oh yeah. Yeah, that's that's crazy. No, that's opportunities like that are kind of one in a lifetime because video games yeah. adaptation into movies already don't really. They're not. They're starting to be more of a thing, but yeah. uh, they're not that popular. No. And usually they're not that good. <laughs> so people are not really inspired by them but i mean yeah even with monster Hunter, like i can fangirl as much as i want on my working experience with it that doesn't mean that as a viewer i sat there and was like this movie is revolutionary it's mm -hmm. dope like that's definitely not what happened but yeah um <laughs> yeah there's just i'm able to just Defiance my experience as someone that came from the game and watched this as a product and i'm like no that's not what i wanted but as far as enjoying my time on the project and working with amazing people and doing amazing work that i can't complain on that it yeah. was a blast that project so yeah. yeah it's very it's very nice too that you probably worked on the like biggest redeeming factor of that movie which is the visual effects and the design of the entire movie so you know where that movie falls into place you worked on the good part yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's like imagine like if the... you you sat here and you were like yeah i worked on the script and be like mm. i don't think <laughs> about that should. i would keep that to myself i think yeah right oh jeez. Yeah. <laughs> i couldn't i could not in good conscience be like yeah i'm a must honor fan and i made the script for that movie like mm. <laughs> it just doesn't go along no. no 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 but usually when i show the people that i did work on it and their their question is like what did you work on and i say the visual effects that's usually the response people have they're like Ah, oh, the only good thing that was playing yeah. on that movie. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you're not wrong. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. No, but it's it's really interesting when you talk about like um, you know, uh, taking some like media and then like getting to do the monster work and the visual effects, right? Uh, the first time that I really saw that uh, was with Detective Pikachu. Mm -hmm. um, but it was like the first time that I actually like took note on that, right? Because you have this you have this movie that is a live action movie that is uh emulating a animated show and they wanted to make it as realistic but as whimsical as possible that's when i first started uh following um uh rj palmer who is like this incredibly like hyper stylized like paleo artist and and fiction artist um and so he does like a bunch of like monster hunter artwork and uh paleontology artwork and pokemon artwork because he worked on detective pikachu and it's one of the it was like the first time that i that i you know firsthand uh, appreciated the type of work that goes in and that visual effects you know creating something that feels life like that you know definitely isn't it's crazy too because like i honestly thought that detective pichu wasn't a bad film i thought it was pretty good for like um live action yeah, it was fun. Video game. yeah it was a fun time um and so it was like other movies like Sonic that I thought that was pretty good for like the age demographic it was meant for. And mm -hmm. like, we have to remember that too. It's like, these movies are not meant for adults. <laughs> yeah. What do you mean? Not everything is catered specifically to me. <laughs> what are you talking about? I thought everything was supposed to be made for me. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um. especially in the context of, I haven't watched Sonic, but I've heard great things about it, but yeah. that's, the first time ever to my knowledge that the public response triggered a change in like mm -hmm. design that's for crazy. sonic and and scary that's like 
as VFX artists, that's probably like our worst fucking nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah but if you, but if, but like, put yourself in that situation. It's like you, a person who understands like what the Sonic character is and like what oh, you know sure. Sonic should be. If you were sitting there making graphics of that, you would probably have like I, I guarantee you there were plenty of people that were working on that. Plenty of graphic designers that were working on that, saying like this is not. This is not the thing that we should be going for. Like, even though this is a live action sh uh, movie and we we want to make it feel live, we shouldn't be going for this live render of a of a hedgehog, right? You know, like there's there is a um there is a point to be made here, and then like the Sonic the Sonic movie does it really well that there is a difference between like uh, success in execution and success in you know um compromise and like that's like an ideal situation where like compromising on this intent that it's supposed to be live action actually made it stronger yeah yeah and it's definitely something that even if people like flagged it very early on that decision of design is being made like so freaking high up in the year yeah that even if like 50 people 100 people flag that if that's what the director wants, that's what the director wants, and he's yeah they're gonna, gonna get it they're not going to change their mind, rarely, if ever, unless yeah. they have such the reaction that they had on Sonic, which was complete disgust. Oh by the end of <laughs> but it's just like, I don't know exactly for how long they were in production at that point, but probably at least six months. So oh, it's easily. just when you think they had a about, trailer out, like a big yeah, trailer, too. Yeah, yeah, to have like six months of work on your main character in your movie being like sent we're not talking about redoing animations here we're we're talking about changing the whole design of that character redoing the skeleton the the rigging the skinning that and then you can go back reshoots. in animation yeah yeah uh, i don't know if there reshoot? were reshoots because that sonic that they first put out was a little was pretty like a lot taller than the smaller Sonic that we got. So I don't know if there were reshoots or, or anything. Cause... If they are, if there was reshoots, that's even more money because time on a set goes by the minute and it, yeah. it fucking burns. Like your lighting crew, your audio crew, like every, it's by the minute. So if they had to go reshoot, that is a whole Insane. new level. <laughs> That's a whole new level, but yeah, it was it paid off. I hope it paid off in their in their revenues for that because oh, yeah, goddamn that. Movie. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. true. Yeah, with knuckles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just remembered that. Oh, I must have. Yeah, not my sonner though. There's not gonna be a second one. <laughs> they, <sighs> they did not. They did not do yeah. their budget. <laughs> the gore. They they had like two seconds of play time, and then they're just yeah. like shoving them under the rug. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Was there so there was a, a clip that was like shown around for that movie, uh, where it was like Gore Magala and Rathalos fighting in the city or something. Mm -hmm. Were you aware of that? Yeah, so that was shot, if I'm not mistaken, in 2014 or 2015. Really? So oh yeah, that was a while ago. So if I remember the timeline correctly. Uh, Monster Hunter was first discussed like in 2012 on one of the Resident Evil uh, shooting mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, the Mr. X, the studio, they went to a mall in Montreal called uh, Eaton Center and they basically shot the, the footage that you see in that test footage of uh, Gore and Rathalos and they basically took like a core crew at the studio, probably some of the most uh, senior people. They pitched, they made that trailer, and that was used to pitch to investors, basically, oh, to okay. get the movie financed. Um, I'm sure it was also to just test the waters, like establish maybe a rough look, even though like it, thank God it didn't end up being in the city. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but probably just like, Establish the the scale of work that that was going to be to do like creatures from scratch and having them interact with one another and uh, yeah so that was done in 2014 and like I watched at work that that test footage I watched it like <laughs> I can't even count 
Oh my like gosh, I can imagine. 50 times, 100 times. Um, it was really cool. <laughs> oh yeah, it was really well, well, apart the fact where Gore had, I don't think Gore has eyes <laughs> in his original design. Oh dear. But in, but well, in the Gore's test not supposed to have eyes. Yeah, yeah he has like, some in the test footage. You're like glowing. He does? Oh. Oh, oh the comment section. <laughs> well, the comment section, if you see that footage, is like, why the fuck does Gore has eyes? And how the fuck is Rattalos <laughs> winning against Gore? <laughs> So they didn't necessarily research a whole lot of lore for that, but I yeah. think it was more for the visual aspect of it, and especially your investors are not gonna know about. Um, yeah, yeah, those people don't know anything. Must yeah. honor yeah. Uh, oh. lore, so it's gonna be that like, one must honor fan when the event starts. It's gonna be like, that's not right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I remember, I remember like years ago, like during during the filming for the Resident Evil movie, and like even after that, um, uh. Paul Anderson, the director, he was saying like, "I want to direct that Monster Hunter movie." Like back then, like in in like the early two thousands, like I want to direct that movie. I want to direct that movie. Um, mm -hmm. I have no idea how he got that. Cause even considering like the the success of the Resident Evil movies and all the nonsense that went on with those, uh, I have no idea how he got that. But I mean, I guess he must have like made a deal or something with Capcom very early on, but. Yeah. I have a visitor. Oh, <laughs> cat! Uh, what? They found, they found their this. way in here. Yeah, she's gonna. It's okay. They're welcome. They're always welcome. She's gonna do a mess. Oh man! And Perfect. the other one, he I had like <laughs> side of my breakfast, like on my side table, and he's like looking to climb on it to go snack. Baby, you're not allowed to be here, and you know oh, that. the other oh, ones here. The second too. one's here. <laughs> One after They're just the climbing other. all over your chair. <laughs> They're not allowed in here, so if they find a way in, uh, they just want to hang out. Okay, well, I don't have time to remove you, so just be nice. <laughs> We're doing a podcast, so just don't start wrecking the room. <laughs> well, before, before we... they destroy everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So now I totally forgot what we do we were talking no, about. No, it's all good. Uh, it was um, before we started diving into more talk about how you got into Monster Hunter and how you got into love of the franchise and everything and got involved with the community. Um, I want, like, you are working on the Uncharted film that's going to be coming out with Tom Holland. Yeah, I just finished actually, like last week. Really? Yeah. Oh, fun. Yeah, yeah, that was. <sighs> Like three months or so, yeah. I arrived towards wow. the end of the project, but um, it kept being like pushed. No, it's gonna deliver at the end of this month, and then we at the end of this month, and they're like, no, it's gonna go until the end of next month, <laughs> and then just goes on and on and on. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, uh, after Monster Hunter, I didn't think I would work again on a project that was so close to my heart. But then here we go, yeah, <laughs> another another video games adaptation, yeah. Uh, have you guys played Uncharted at all, or? Nope. I've uh... watched it a bunch. Uh, like, you know, I, I used to, when the games would come out, and, like, everyone was, like, so excited about them, I, I would watch them then. So, I, you know, I, I find them at least interesting. Uh, but, you know, with ha it's like a Tomb Raider game, in my opinion, right? Like, it's, yeah. it's very much that kind of, like, linear story progression kind of puzzle platformer in a, in a 3D environment. So, I'm, I'm like, and I'm, yeah. I'm okay. <laughs> so I'll just watch. but they're cool but they're cool to watch yeah, they tell they tell amazing stories oh, um yeah. and i think that this is like i think this is a, a really good film adaptation just from the fact that it already has a really good basis it already has a really good story to tell and then just backing it up with like really good like a, amazing talent and then you know strengthening that story with something that's actually meant for the big screen in two and a half hours like that's I, I I feel like this is going to be a successful, you know, movie. Oh, yeah. I just yeah. hope they don't rush it. Fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but they're games that are, like, focused on strong storytelling and character development, so that really, like, fits well into a two-hour, two-hour-and-a-half movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, I started playing the games, well, when the first one came out in 2007 on PS3, uh, and I'm a big Indiana Jones fan from my dad, so, like, that, oh. that felt right in my, my alley. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I played the first one loved it and then like i waited for each new installment in a series like one after the other um you're not eating that <laughs> <laughs> um, 
the cat strikes again. Oh, uh, dude, he's just like putting his paw up, and I'm like, no, dude, that's not for you. <laughs> um, but yeah, and then the last one came out a while ago on PS4, and I cried my eyes out when I finished the game. Like, that was just such a good conclusion to the franchise, and I was not surprised when they made a when they decided it was announced that there was going to be a movie about it, because then again, like character development and uh, storytelling already all fits well within that universe to be adapted. Um, mm -hmm. But then the fact that I started at this new studio in June, so it's been like four or five months. And then I told them if there's any chance I could work on it, I would lose my shit, but I just arrived. So I didn't want to make like strong demands. And then they yeah. put me on it and... Yeah, the type of work I got to do on it too. It was just a well-rounded, like a good project where the team I worked with was really nice. The type of shot, the type of work that was needed uh, in CGI in the movie was great. Uh, there wasn't no stress or no like, I want this to be over so I can have a life again. <laughs> That's um, nice. So that was like just actually a... wanting to work on it. That's yeah. Nice. yeah. Yeah. Because sometimes you can have nice coworkers, ni nice work itself, like the tasks are nice. But if people are like, sorry for saying, but shitting stress on you to be like, mm -hmm. this is a deadline. When are you going to have a version? Like, when are you ready to show something? Mm -hmm. uh, it can really become like uninspiring to be on a project, even if you have like a personal attachment to it. Yeah. And Mass Honor was like that at the end, where it's just like the enjoyment was a bit gone because the level of stress and the pressure that was to deliver that and get it out of the door was like really, really, really big. Because then again, it was like the biggest project going on at that time at the studio. So like pressure was just couldn't deal with it. So by the yeah. end... Like I was, I was really glad I worked on it and I'm never going to stop bragging about it. But by the end, I was like, okay, I'm happy it's done now. <laughs> yeah. Relieved. <laughs> yeah. But Uncharted wasn't, uh, was pretty much the opposite where like, I think the last couple of weeks I was on it, it was always supposed to be my last week. And then I just kept getting extended <laughs> and i tell my boss like i can stay until the end i don't <laughs> so just, i'll keep working on fun. it yeah it's just been fun but um awesome. yeah the project for us is on its end uh i think it's in the trailer it said it's releasing in february in theaters yeah so really soon yeah we're getting close to the end here uh so yeah i'm in between project right now i should be moving on to new stuff really soon but yeah that was definitely uh another big highlight in my career for sure that's yeah. awesome yeah is there anything that you can reveal about your next project or like not until like stuff gets shown out? i don't even know oh, you don't i don't even know, even know what I'm... <laughs> no i don't know it kept changing a lot lately because we have a crazy crazy amount of project going on Mm -hmm. um a lot of projects that i'm really really into but sadly nothing i can share for now because no, it's all protected fine. under nda yeah. <laughs> yeah i figured like you, for, oh, for all you know you could... mumbo jumbo oh yeah <laughs> for all you yeah. know you could be working on the next marvel movie because i hear like a lot of people are just like yeah apparently i was working on this i didn't know it's been released. <laughs> <It's a trailer. laughs> like even actors don't even know when they get like the script or something. They it just says like a different title or even like a Star Wars film. I've heard that they yeah. had to come up with like different like names for it. So then when they're out and filming and working on it, people see the name. They're like, oh okay. They just continue going by. Yeah. Like it's more for public uh, use. Oh yeah. yeah they make we like have... code names for it. All of our projects in the last six years I've worked, they always have a, a show code so yeah mm -hmm. i mean monster Hunter was mh <laughs> it was just mh mm. yeah. <laughs> y'all should be a little more creative about it some of them are like really different you know but some creature of them slayer are just, <laughs> lazy. just like mh yeah. man you're like okay <laughs> because like we even saw that um like back at the beginning of the year when all of capcom's uh release schedule was was uh leaked stolen um if you ever looked at that schedule 
um, all of their titles were under code names. Mm -hmm. And so like Rise was under code names. Um, their, uh, all of their Resident Evil projects were under code names. And they were really, really arbitrary. Like it was like, like, so, like, like fungus for, you know, uh, Resident Evil Village or something like that, right? <laughs> like they're, it was, it was so abstract. Like the, the, the links that, that some of these companies go to to like, cover you know what what projects they're working on so nothing gets kind of shown beforehand is is, is kind of insane i mean it's kind of cool saying yeah. project fungus <laughs> <laughs> project <laughs> shroom coming if you in 2024. A project before you would just say fungus like randomly in your sentence and if you were talking about it publicly with somebody people around you would be like what, <laughs> like, what, what do you mean what do you mean fungus, you mean project fungus? fungus? <laughs> what? Um, but yeah it's I don't know. just to protect it a little bit more like i don't know like the thing for us is the industry is like blooming in montreal right and mm -hmm. most of the studios when you're working in office obviously it's not the case for the last year and a half but um all the studios are kind of in the same spot in the city so if you'd be like i don't know you're going out on lunch and you're grabbing coffee and you're talking about the project with somebody else if you mm. if you, there's no show code anybody can kind of pick up information about that so if you're talking about a project and you have a show code that is not mh <laughs> the two first initial of your literally movie. anything else yeah, yeah so. um <laughs> then it's a little bit more you know easy to protect but yeah yeah uh nda in vfx is you don't joke around with that no absolutely it's, it's not. kind of the same well uh, we're sisterhood with the video game industry, basically. Like most people that go be artists into games, they do uh, the, the type of studies or they get the same type of diploma that I do. And a lot of people jump back and forth between the VFX industry and the video game industry. So we kind of have the same guidelines, even though uh, some things are not exactly the same. Like I don't work with game engine whatsoever. I mm -hmm. just do the best looking images without any restriction, but in games, you can't have that kind of liberty because you have the performance yeah. of whatever you're porting on mm -hmm. that needs to be considered. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's uh, especially with work from home too, we have to be a lot more careful to make sure we don't screw up that uh, relationship with, with our bosses because it's been something definitely hard to fight for in the pandemic yeah. situation to be able to work from home. Like that's been very difficult for some studios to accept. Because they're like, well, our clients are not going to agree. Our clients are not going to agree. Well, it's like, mm. does he want his movie or not? <laughs> we can wait three <laughs> years then when we can go back to office. But yeah. otherwise, people are not going to go work in the office. So, yeah. Oh. It's been difficult to... I think the latest... The new Spider-Man uh, movie that's going to come on has been leaked by somebody in the VFX industry. Like a trailer. And people mm. were pissed. People are like, dude, you're sacrificing the work from home situation of so many people by doing that. Because yeah. now the trust is going to be so, so thin. It's it's really so, crazy how like things are being revealed right now. Because a lot of, I won't reveal any leaks that have been shown. Because I don't want to give attention to that. But yeah. like, they, there have been leaks that have been shown that like more and more now, which is crazy. And like uh, i don't know I, I imagine that's from like people working from home or just people on set taking pictures or something and then posting them online it's yeah uh it sucks because like for me i don't want to be spoiled by the movie and then i scroll through tiktok and i run via video that reveals that picture and i'm like what the <laughs> it's even yeah. like right now we're running into that problem um next week uh pokemon brilliant diamond shining pearl comes out and the beginning of this week it was all leaked um someone got like some ones like multiple people got a hold of copies of the game and just played through the entire game people were streaming it on twitch streaming it on youtube um going to other places and mm. and showing the game and just leaking information everywhere like it was so bad the moment i saw it i was like okay time to go on twitter and mute literally I muted Pokemon just entirely. I muted Diamond Pearl. I muted the acronym for it. I muted everything. So I don't I don't want to be spoiled. No. Right? Yeah. And and, and some people 
And even, even still it's, you know, you can do everything that you possibly can to like try to avoid that. And even on Twitter, people just don't have that common sense that like someone might not want to see this because they don't care. You know, they're, they're, they're selfish. They're already selfishly doing something right. Like playing a, a, a game illegally, like leaked, you know, either a stolen copy or a leaked copy or whatever it may be. They don't have any common consideration for anyone else. And so they just, they just care about themselves and their own clout. I think that's like really what it's coming down to is like people realize that it's like, Oh, I can just be internet famous for a month. If I leak this information. Right. Yeah. They're pretty much uh, having this merchandise on hype with this solo information, but then yeah, me as an artist, it pisses me off because let's say a trailer of what I've been working on leaks out. People don't necessarily have the, step back of realizing I probably have six months of work that's still coming up on this. So what you're saying is likely not the final product. So if mm -hmm. people start introducing like criticism and oh, it looks like shit or whatever, like I remember the first trailer of Monster Hunter that came out, it wasn't leaked, but still it was still the project was still going on and people literally shat on the fact that Diablos didn't have like the Diablos roar. And I was yeah. like, bro, that's like, that's temporary, like sound effects, like sound effect montage come after our, like us most of the time. Mm. And yeah. we're not even like, we were, I don't know when the first trailer released, but we were at least like six or nine months before we were done with the project. But yeah, it's just, I don't necessarily like, I don't like trailers to begin with if they're really long and they show me too much because I just, I'm, I want to watch a movie, dude. I don't want to watch a condensed version of it in two minutes. Mm -hmm. um, it's like the same people that were, that were, uh, bitching and moaning about the cowboy bebop uh live action show that's coming out and they're like oh well the outfit isn't right and like oh well you know the the feeling of the show isn't right like i mean i i get like i get i get criticism to the point of like it doesn't feel like the same show but complaining about an outfit that legitimately isn't realistic in a live action <laughs> yeah. situation I like it, it was so bad to the point that people were harassing the actress and the actress was like flat out like hey like my my all of that under region cannot handle that in stunts. Like it, it, you just can't do it. You go do it. Right. And yeah. then, like, it got so bad too. Um, Cause uh, a cosplayer, Meg Turney did uh, the cosplay of that character and was like, and then like, and did it like, you know, two show specifications, like it was, it looked identical, but she's like, no dude, like all this stuff is like barely pinned on. And like, I did it just for this photo shoot. Like we, we put it together for a photo shoot, not for a live action, you know, movie, a television show where you have to go and do stunts and stuff like that because people were retweeting, uh, Meg's tweet at the actress saying like, she can do it. Why can't you guys do it? It's like, because this is different. Mm. Yeah. It's a completely different thing. It's very different. <laughs> There's Holy so many shit. constraints when you're adapting like medias like that, like either it's a game or manga, yeah. anime. Like people sometimes say, or a lot of times say, like stay true to the to the source material. There's things in Monster Hunter, like animations and stuff. Forget about it. Like forget recreating that it. with a real actor no. that is safe <laughs> and that's gonna um, look accurate to the game. <laughs> She didn't do a TCS. <laughs> Honestly, I no, we didn't see her somersault over the great sword and launch it into the monster. We didn't see her shoulder check the monster. Like, honestly, can we even can we even call it a Monster Hunter movie if you're just not doing the actual weapon combinations? She didn't roll across Diablos's back with the dual blades. I didn't. I, <laughs> yeah, what's that about? <laughs> the, no the babbling. Absurdities I read, but like some of them, you, yeah, it's valid. But others, like I think I saw a lot of people complain about the size of the great sword, which, yeah, it mm. is smaller. But the thing is, is when you record scenes and stuff, yeah, it's not actually metal. But if he would have to carry on such a big prop on set, it limits a It'd lot of the movement and the interactions he can have with other people you don't think about that when you play the game whatsoever mm -hmm. but when you have to apply that with real world constraint um it's a lot tougher and it's probably why the netflix movie of monster Hunter went with a fully cgi approach mm -hmm. because when your characters are cgi and stuff and everything else around it 
then you're not restrained by having to grant things in reality. So you have complete mm -hmm. freedom of if you want them to do like the six three sixteen in the air with their insect leave and do a dive and shit, like do it. But trying to do that with like stuns and like wires everywhere, and then it's probably not gonna look good. So at the end of the day, you're gonna yeah. have to erase your actor on screen and replace it with a CGI double. Like that's that's a lot of a work. Lot of and what people didn't necessarily realize is for how much CGI was when was in Monster Hunter, the budget was really small. If you compare it to like Marvel movies or whatever intensive oh, CGI yeah. movies you watch nowadays and you compare the budget for these two movies, it doesn't come close. It no. doesn't come close whatsoever. So uh, Marvel movies are insane. Like with the amount of budget oh. they have for each of the movies. Like there was a scene in Shang-Chi where they were just like, uh, he jumped from like one train car to the next or something. And he was like, oh, no, like his entire half of the body is CGI and the, like, the other half is, isn't. And I'm just like. <laughs> oh, and that's a nightmare. That's yeah. a nightmare. That's like technically that's so hard to do stuff like that. Um, but yeah, like I was saying, Monster Hunter uh, had 1300 VFX shots. An average Marvel movies nowadays has 2500. That's a crazy amount. Like that's the number of time a shot in a movie has VFX in it, has CGI. Like mm, yeah. that's a crazy amount. And that's split so, between different studios because no company can handle that like in its in its integrity. It's just too big. Yeah. So, it's an insane disparity too, because like you you mentioned, like if you compare like the Monster Hunter movies budget to a uh, Marvel movies. I didn't think it would be this big. So uh, yeah. I, I looked up I looked up the Monster Hunter movie first. Okay. Monster Hunter movie had a budget of sixty million dollars. Yeah. Jesus. That's a lot of money. That's a lot. Yeah. But then but then you go, then you look at Marvel movies. Marvel's uh so we won't even I'm not even gonna say endgame because it's it's idiotic. That, that's, yeah. that's I'm gonna insane. say I'm gonna say like a uh a, a b-rate marvel movie which i'm not saying that it's, it's a bad movie it's actually a fantastic movie um ant-man okay yeah 130 units you know, that million dollars Jesus literally Christ. more than double that yeah. of the monster hunter movie uh yeah. end game was 400 million dollars so like you, you just can't compare it disney has literally all of the money in the world <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, like, sixty million is a lot of money. I'm not saying like. It's oh yeah, not, no, it's, it's not a big oh, budget. Yeah. But when you compare to something that has the similar amount of CGI work, mm -hmm. that's that's a small budget. That's a small budget, oh. and we we it was supposed to be a a one year project. It was supposed to go from October 2018 to October 2019. Uh, I'm Mr. X, and it ended up finishing in March 2020, right before the pandemic hit. So it was a big project. It was a lot of probably managing that budget. I can't, I don't know, but it must have been a nightmare to manage that with all the work that needed to be done. Mm -hmm. So as much as I can't claim the movie to be good, as far as the work that we did, I have no complaints. We did like yeah. the absolute best that we could do with the constraint that we had both time and budget so that was crazy yeah that's crazy definitely so the pandemic Insane. um did it have a lot to play in how the movie was released because the movie was like a, a lot of movies have been i've had a lot of trouble releasing because of the pandemic was did you see a lot of the issues from the inside and like how things were were going uh, not really, because uh, the project was out of the door in March 2020, I think, for us. Mm -hmm. And I don't think there was discussion of when it was released uh, until like the next summer or fall. Because I remember, I think it came out in China in like December mm -hmm. of last year. And uh, we all know that didn't go very well. <laughs> mm. And... I think following the release in China and the response, there was the event that was added in the game, which mm -hmm. I think was trying to help advertise the movie because losing China, like, I don't know if people realize that, but it was never, it, it played for like two days in China. It was taken down. There was a censored version made, but it was never re-released in China. It was completely canceled in China, Whoa, the movie. Yeah. So they had what like they lost one of their biggest um 
source of revenue for that movie, which is probably what made them, they didn't make their budget. Their profit they made on a movie, I think they made like 40,000 something. They didn't like do their budget of 60, uh, which is probably why we're never going to see a second one. <laughs> oh yeah, it was only, it was only uh, 40 million. Yeah, I didn't make its money. So, um, but yeah, once it's the project... It's so unfortunate yeah. that like, because... It's not from work that you did. It's man. <laughs> it's not it's it's not from work that you did. It's not from what the what the actors had to do, right? I mean, I, I, albeit it's literally one director and one uh one author's decision uh to make the movie in the way that they did that literally hindered it from ever possibly seeing a second uh, second iteration of it. We'll see like in 10 years another attempt at this. Probably. Yeah, but like if a monster Hunter movie came out next year, one Capcom would not be able to f- uh, front it. Like at this point, you're you're gonna lose twenty million dollars. You're never gonna get an investor on that. And then there's still the public opinion of like, well, the first one was shit. Like, mm. sure, it was great to look at, but like, if you know, you can't, you can't, you don't have, you know, uh, you, you need substance to it, right? Yeah. Yeah. The best visual effects in the world is never gonna save a bad movie. Like, exactly we're we're here to support storytelling <clears throat> and help sell your world and your universe and like support that but if the foundation of it is garbage nobody's gonna be like yeah yeah Nobody this movie was that. great because it looked amazing mm. <laughs> there's, there's a very few movies that did that for me but it's yeah. like it's movies that they had not a poor plot but just like the story wasn't the focus and it embraced that and the like the transformer example, movies i give pacific rim as an example you oh see. pacific rim is also a great yeah. is a great example I it's like, literally just big robots fighting big monsters that's all it needs to be i want to give that a shot and watch seen. it i haven't seen pacific rim yet i want to oh, watch so it and good. give it a shot is it good it is. I've seen that movie in the at the theater like three times. Really, when I need to watch it's it. A fun, it's I a was, fun. It's a fun. And I was the first person when I saw the trailer. I was like, "Fucking stupid movies with like <laughs> and kaiju's like fucking each other up." I was like, "Fuck this, man! I've seen enough. I don't want another movie of that." And then I went to see it. It's like that shit is dope. And I went like two other times to go see it at the Crazy. movie theater because yeah, I the watched second it one was so solid too. Eh. <laughs> Hey, the second one did exactly what I expected it to do. Big robots fighting big monsters. That's all I needed. That's that was the expectation I, I went into when I watched it. I was just yeah. like, I, it just needs to be big things fighting each other. I don't need anything else from this. Yeah, I wish I could agree. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the second one, but the first one is just well, Guillermo del Toro is a director that I just absolutely freaking love. Yeah. Um, but Pacific Rim is just like it's the movie where it hops in it gives you the plot in like less than two minutes it's just like hey there's a reef at the bottom of the, of the ocean there's monsters spawnings and so to counter that we, gra- we created our own monsters which is big ass robots and that's your plot and then the rest of the movie is just badassery and so <laughs> that's a good that's all good it needs movie. to be yeah no, but that's a good movie where it's like yeah. I went to see that movie, I watched that movie for outstanding visual effects, but also this movie doesn't add me corny ass dialogues I don't give two shits about, and yeah. it doesn't try to fill in with anything that's useless. Which, when I worked on Monster Honor, I genuinely thought the movie was going to be good, but the things that I didn't quite realize is the only part of the movie I saw was where there was CGI. And mm. that was in the in the action scenes. So I didn't see like all the fillers and all the downtime where the two characters are trying to kill each other for an obscure reason. And then that's when I watched it, I was like, huh, I didn't remember there was so <laughs> much fillers in here. I was like, yeah, okay. I guess that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I guess if it would have been not for the two hunters trying to kill each other, that would have already been more manageable. <laughs> Well, like, it, yeah. even in that same, like, even if they just took the Pacific Rim formula, there was no reason that we need to have this, like, real world carryover. That didn't need to be the plot. Like, it, it could have, it could have been its own thing, just like about, like, it could have just been Legends of the Guild, right? But live action, you know? 
make a small hunter village moga village from 3u right like you you that is that is an easy set to make you know just like just like thinking about it you don't need to make like um imagine how cool you don't need to, to fight make... laggy right no that that'd, be, been, that'd be neat like they're underwater but, like, you don't need to make eyes. <laughs> you don't need to make these gigantically like just complex you know universes you can make it a relatively simple universe and just put it in peril and then hey it's monster hunter just make something that was just you know unapologetically monster hunter like yeah. pacific rim was unapologetically big robots fighting big kaiju that's all it needed yeah. to be I... and that's all that this movie needed to be and they didn't do that mm. no no, and sadly, I don't know about you guys, but uh, after I watched a Netflix movie, I it was weird because the flaws and what I liked in the Paul W. S. Anderson movie was kind of the flip side with the Netflix one, yes. where um, it felt like Monster Hunter when I watched it, but at the end, I was like, this movie was condensed like for sure yeah that that's that was probably the, two hours that because of budget yeah <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Because, the of, no, because yeah. because of budget or timeline or deadlines or whatever they probably had to continuously like cut chunks to make it fit a deadline or a budget and at the end that's what they delivered but yeah, I remember watching the fight with Nursilla and being there's moments in that fight where I was just like, I don't know what just happened in front of my eyes. Like the yeah. the choreography or the coordination of like how the sh the confusing. cuts were made, or I was just like, what the fuck just happened? Like I don't yeah. I don't know. The, and... um, my understanding of it was that the project was started like back in 2010 by another company. And lost, crap. yeah, and like lost uh, funding in 2012 when it was supposed to come out. And then Netflix recently, you know, picked it, like picked up the project, just bought the project and finished it. Mm. Um, that's how I understand it, whether or not that's true or not. I don't know. That's just kind of yeah. like the pieces that I picked up from from just the, the timeline of this thing. Cause I've been following it since it like was announced that this thing was going to be happening, which I don't know. I might be wrong about my timeline. It was either 2012 or 2014 that, that the stuff was going on. Um, I could be wrong about my, my timeline. Um, so, you know, correct me on it, whatever. But all I, but what I do know is that it, it inevitably like lost its backing, lost its, uh, you know, it's, it's team. And then yeah. Netflix was like, well, we can pick this up and and flip it really quick and so that's probably why it felt so like chaotic and unorganized because they probably had a script legitimately that that entire movie was probably a six episode miniseries mm -hmm. that they sh yeah. just shunted into this into this two-hour movie instead because that was the footage that was available and then they just filled in the gaps uh... yeah which is <laughs> To be the artist in that mess, like that's, that's oh changing gosh. clients. So you're changing artistic direction, the type of feedback you're receiving. And mm. that's a nightmare. But um, yeah, when I came out of that film, I was like, if you could take the script they did on the Netflix one and stretch it to something of a reasonable length, because an hour for me is not a movie. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. That's like a mini episode. Mm -hmm. Uh, so if you stretch it to a length that would be convenient for a movie, and so with the storyline that they had mixed with the um, the CGI that we did or something comparable, I think we would have something pretty close to what the fan base would like would have wanted, as yeah. a product. Yeah. But um, it's kind of <clears throat> weird, too. They came out like so close to one another. They're so different in product and what yeah. they delivered, but both of them kind of didn't nail down what people wanted and it's a bit of a shame for the netflix one because i think at its core it was monster it was super great to watch i loved it but uh, you could feel you could just feel that that project had been either tossed over or like shrunk down to what it was supposed to be and people just tried to do the best that they could with their with their timeline but uh like we say in my industry movies or projects are never done they they just get released so yeah. it's yeah. never finished it's always a work in progress but at one point you just got to deliver the product to the client so i feel like that with a lot of movies sometimes like there was recently the carnage movie that was uh put out we worked Oof. on that you did 
I didn't, but the studio I work for uh, did the, the visual effects on it. That oh, wow. and Dune. Dune that came out recently that I need to go watch too. Yeah, that... no, yeah, I need to watch Dune. I've, yeah. uh, I, Dune, I heard, was absolutely amazing. I want to give that a watch oh, yeah. for sure. It's on HBO. It's not Is in Canada, really? man. I'm so pissed. It's not. I, Googled, <laughs> I Googled it. It said uh, available on HBO Max, and then I Google HBO Max, and then it's like, get a VPN. it's hosted... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I was yeah. just about to say that. This well, episode of uh, Gamer Breakfast is brought to you by. No, uh, <laughs> good segue. I have, so, I have one. Can you I imagine? It, oh, and it still wouldn't be there. So I'm yeah. cursed to go watch it in IMAX at the movie theater. What a Ooh. shame. And Dune, I heard, was incredible. <laughs> oh, though. darn. Yeah. Man, I haven't been to a movie theater in two years. Maybe I like three yeah, years now. Same. My goodness. It's going to be my first time since, since the pandemic. Really? I wanted to go watch Monsanto at the movie theater. Like it was my too. It was my fucking dream to sit in in the seat at the theater and scream at the credit. That's my fucking name. <laughs> but, <laughs> like, what? I, I never <laughs> had that moment. That? So I just screenshotted it and I posted it on Twitter and that was my moment. <laughs> <laughs> That's you know, honestly though probably a bigger moment. <laughs> probably, uh, but like I had so many people connecting from that post. I was like, yes, <laughs> that's awesome. But no, yeah. like with the Carnage movie, I'm not going to spoil anything. But for me, it was like it felt very, <laughs> felt very fast paced for me. Like the like yeah. it, it, for I was seeing a lot of movies recently. Like I've been noticing just like um how much budget can affect a movie, like with how much CGI or how much is involved. Because I felt like the, the story and the development of all the characters in the Carnage movie were kind of brought down more because of the budget. And I, I wish I could like learn more about some certain characters because they kind of threw them in there and just like, this is the relationship they have. And then it, it was just, it felt very quick and very fast. But it was all in all, the action sequences were really fun. Uh, it was a fun movie overall. The end credits scene, great. Um... Yeah, no, that yeah, I just noticed that with films lately. <laughs> I need to watch. They Friday's all have that. This one. Mm. Hmm? Yeah, the, the, like all all the movies recently. I, I think I agree with you. All the movies recently, they really do feel like it's just we have these really big ideas with these really grandiose scale that we want to achieve. We don't want to pay you any money to do it. Like we don't want to give you any sort of like time or budget or anything to do this. But you need to deliver that anyways. And that is like that is such. Like, it's such a weird, like, concept to think about because, you know, you got to get paid for what you make. You got to get paid to, like, do what you do. Like, the studio has to get paid. But, like, imagine, you know, a producer uh, be coming to you and saying, like, hey, we need these spe special effects made and you're going to get bare minimum for it. Yeah, and it's especially, like, a problematic for us when, because there's... The CGI uh, studios can get implicated at different stage of when a movie is made, and the best mm -hmm. one is obviously at the very beginning because directors don't know necessarily, and most of the time, how like CGI, for instance, needs to how you need to film your movie in order to serve like the CGI or whatever you want to add on it at the end in post production, and. Sometimes like clients come to us and their movies all recorded, it's all done and they're just like, now I just need the visual effects done for my project and they didn't necessarily film accordingly. And so you, they end up spending more of their budget on insignificant shit so that we can do our job. And uh, an example or a couple of examples I can give for that is um, there's a project I worked two or three years ago, a Brad Pitt movie, which is called Ad Astra. And he was, Brad Pitt was mostly filmed on a green screen. He's an astronaut and he has like mm. a visor on his helmet, but he's filmed on green screen. So mm. what happens is like his visor has reflection of green screen everywhere. So we ended up having to erase his visor, reconstruct his face, I believe, just so we could redo a visor, uh, like a CGI visor that doesn't have the reflection of green screen on it. Yep. Like, if, there was, if, if there the was a VFX supervisor, supervisor, if there was a VFX supervisor on that project when that was filmed, he would have just been, dude, record Brad without, Pitt, without visor. his visor, yeah. and we're just gonna add that in post. But they probably had nobody, so they were just like, hmm, let's just put a visor. <laughs> glass, dude. <laughs> Fuck glass. I have two years. 
I have two years of 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 video production just from streaming, right? I use a green screen. The illusion is broken. I'm actually not in the bagel shop. Fuck. I have two I lights right were. here. I, I, the, like, <laughs> me just sitting here and doing this, and the reflection in my fucking glasses is enough for me to understand that the moment you put glass anywhere near a green screen, it's gonna reflect in. Oh my gosh. I, yeah. yeah. I am unskilled labor and understand that. <laughs> like, and that's the thing, and it's like, they're gonna come to you, and they're, they're gonna, like, pitch this project, and they're gonna say what they need to be done for this project, and so they're, like, dope, no and then the studio's like, this is the budget, and then you receive all the materials, like, what, months later? Yeah. That was filmed on set, and then you receive this, and you're like, fuck, dude, he has green screen reflection all over his helmet, what the fuck are we gonna do with that? And they're like, well, we gotta replace it, and you're like, okay, but in the budget that was established, like, six months ago, when you told yeah. me the scale of work on your movie, we didn't know you'd have a face. It's actually with terrifying. Like, imagine, imagine having to, like, okay, so uh, in, in my line of work, I'm an environmental scientist, so... We have nothing in common other than <laughs> budgeting, right? Because yeah. in my line of work, I need to understand every single part of the project in order to budget it because, you know, we're not taking a loss. I'm not, I'm not taking a loss on my projects. I am coming out on top no matter what every single time. Yeah. And so I need every bit of project information. But like in this case, when, you, when they're pitching a movie and you bid the project and, you're, and they're like coming to you saying like, we want the visual effects and this, you're like, okay, well, here's our number for that without knowing what any of the materials are going to be, what the actual scenes are going to be, what anything looks like. That is terrifying to me. How do you make any money like that? Because like they could just they could uh, literally just hand you a pile of shit and be like, make it beautiful, please. Uh, yeah, and that happens way more than people think, honestly. Like, I could uh, only uh, imagine. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. you're sitting here talking about having to take out a visor, reconstruct a face, and then put a visor back in. And that happens so fucking often. Just film the face. So often. <laughs> well, people think they're doing you a favor by adding an element on set, and in the end, oh, it just yeah. ends up being a fucking like pain in the ass. Do you guys have seen the movie? <laughs> it came out a couple of years ago. I think it's called Chappie. Yes. It's like I okay, have this it. robot, this robot with like I ears, to. I think. Yeah. So like a wrestling like ear movie, antenna right? things. <laughs> when you watch like the movie, no. Of... No, what was that? Is that <laughs> you a... think... No, no, no. There was a robot wrestling movie. <laughs> yeah, that's uh that's uh oh gosh, uh it's boxing, robot boxing movie. I know which one you're talking about. Uh, oh. Real Steel. You're thinking of Real oh, Steel. Okay. I haven't seen that either. Honestly, though. honestly though, very very close. Real <laughs> <laughs> no, just like just like in, in concept, it's like yeah, uh, live action with a with a robot. But one's about boxing and another one's about racism. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> But um, Chappie, he's a uh, he's a robot in a movie, and <laughs> he's obviously a full CGI. <laughs> He's obviously a full CGI character, but and when you watch the making of of that movie, they're like, "Oh yeah, we had a guy on set with a motion capture suit um, to record Chappie's movement," um, but they didn't actually like the suit that he's wearing is bullshit. That's not a mocap suit, so they just like put him there for reference. But for the movie. They had to erase that guy in every single shot just so that they could put the robot. Because obviously, if you put the robot on top of the dude, like he's he's gonna be on the outline. Yeah. So every single shot, they had to erase that dude in a fake mocap suit and put the robot back on top. Oh, that's what are you eating? Annoying. What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> Bye, Scoy. Uh, no, that, oh, I hate that. But that, that's the importance of like, for us, it's always the best when we get a project and we know that the VFX supervisor, the producers were on set. And that's what happened on Monster Honor. Like, yeah. We were on that project since the beginning. It was filmed accordingly, accordingly for what we needed to do. Because, yeah, I'm sure you want to accommodate your your actors because they're the lead and shit, but we're gonna agree on the fact that the main focus on Monster Honor is the monsters. So yeah. if you don't make your movie accordingly, it's just gonna be like shit. And that's, <laughs> but that that's happens like the same so thing. often. That's like the same thing that we do. Like if I go into if I go into something, I'm like, I need to be there. 
to to do this the right way because like if you don't have the person that's the professional that can guide you the right way you're gonna have us trying to pick up the pieces at the very end of it and yeah. like that's that's like that's like honestly true of like any like subcontractor work right like that's that's effectively what you are at this point you're a subcontractor to the producer you're doing a service for them like i'm the exact same way i'm a subcontractor to a construction development and so like you, you need you need people that are like actually thinking about those things it's much more interesting in the movie industry right because like for me it's like you put the dirt in the wrong place but for you it's like i have to delete this entire human being from existence out of your movie yeah <laughs> yeah the main character yeah, no. <laughs> the that's main character. so wild to me that like that like you would you would think that oh yeah for a reference we're gonna put this person in and they can just take them out later like you need background references to replace what's behind them if you just don't have that like i i've done that before like i've i you like in photo editing not in video editing i couldn't possibly tell you how to do that in video editing but in photo editing if i don't have a background reference i don't know what the fuck to put there no like could you imagine like in a video like uh we'll put like seattle back there or something like you gotta figure that out now <laughs> yep yeah is that where people with my profession comes in <laughs> because yeah. i work in an environment so like doing background is just is what i do and there's so many times where I had to change the background for continuity as well, because like, let's say this whole scene is happening during a, a sunny day. And the day before when they shot, it was sunny. And then the next day when they shoot at the same spot, it's cloudy. Oh. So I have to reconstruct an entire background to recreate the lighting do... environment. Yeah, so like, you're, cause you're saying like you do background, but then like, that's also like a foreground lighting change too. Like, do you also do that? No, so my role is called digital matte painter. So okay. I come usually towards the end of the production. So my job can include a different kind of work type, but usually it's either set extensions. So let's say on set, it's a castle. They're only going to build like the first layer and me in post-production, I have to extend like the rest of yeah. the environment that wasn't possibly built on set. Mm. That's one. Um, I can do what I call plate cleanup or reconstruction, which is what we just talked about, either for continuity or they want elements not to be there. Uh, let's say like they shot in Toronto, but the movie's supposed to be happening in New York, uh, like put in recognizable building or change things from Toronto that wouldn't be there in New York. Yeah. Um, or one of the other one is uh, patching on top of CGI, which is basically, um, when you do an asset in CG, uh, it goes to different departments. It's going to go to modeling and then texturing. And if it, it's, if it needs to be animated, there's going to be rigging or the skeleton animation, lighting, rendering. It's like a whole production pipeline. Um, sometimes you come at a point in production where there's not enough time to put an asset, like to push it further in quality. So I come in to basically work on top because my job is basically like a super advanced uh, photo montage in Photoshop. Mm -hmm. I work with pictures. I need to make sure they have the same lighting direction, the same colors. And then I make an environment with a bunch of photo that I just picked up together and made a final image of it. So... And that's not easy to do. Like I've tried that mm -hmm. before. I've watched like tutorial on tutorial, like just in Photoshop. Like there's there's so many people that have they make, you know, uh, just scenes out of nothing. Like you take like thirty or forty different images and you just make a completely new place. I I can't do that. Like that's that's insanely talented. It's that's that's talented. it's it comes a lot to like the type of. Um... Uh, photos that you're given because obviously like mm. i can't just go on google image and grab things because i'm gonna get copyrighted and the studio's gonna hate yeah. me which has happened plenty in the past oh <laughs> uh oh yeah that happens more than people think uh but usually if the the studio is smart they're gonna send somebody on set while they're filming if we were implicated at that point in the movie and take a bunch of references from where they shot and then from there i can uh i can make something up but yeah it's basically just like like you said taking like 30 40 images and making like a final product out of that and obviously there's a little bit more where uh basically i do a painting on one image on a still frame and then i project that onto geometry so it has volume so when the camera mm -hmm. moves you can feel volume and depths in that environment 
but everything that's like characters foreground detaching like characters from background i'm not that's a different department there's really like right. a department for each specialty for each discipline and me it's mostly just environment whether gotcha. that's background or foreground or middle ground that can be anything but yeah. um i don't touch characters i don't touch anything that's animated <laughs> would you want to like is that something that like you you plan on doing in the future Probably not. Uh, that's a lot. Pro yeah, that's a lot. I like to, I really like the creative aspect of my job. Uh, when mm -hmm. you get into like a lot of animated, it's very technical. Uh, yeah. One thing I would love to do more in the future is just concept, because I think there's something incredibly rewarding to establish the look of like a whole movie or a whole uh, game. I think that's. That's probably yeah. the most fun part for me when you ask about projects is probably the very beginning when everything kind of you have to make things take shape mm -hmm. and how they're going to be in the future. So I think that's incredibly rewarding. But one thing I would love to do is just not necessarily move away from movies, but I would love to work for game cinematics. That, uh, that, that would be like be taking neat. my hobby for video games and my job and then combating them together. That would be like the perfect synergy. Yeah. Ah, that'd be so cool. Yeah. Because my job doesn't exist in video games, really. Uh, environment <laughs> are not like 2D. They're mostly going to be like, uh, they're going to be assets. And if it does exist, that's probably for like the background that you can't reach in gameplay. That's just there for like placeholders. Just, you know? and yeah, that's it's not... like your skybox. Yeah, which is not... You know, Very it detailed. gets repetitive. It's like yeah. probably a sky, maybe some mountains or like background buildings. If it's a city, uh, are we having yeah. a party here? <laughs> yeah, we're having a party. Look at them go. They're just surviving. <laughs> they are so god. They want attention. <laughs> but um, yeah, my my job doesn't really exist in video games. So the closest I could go would be cinematics. Uh, that would be that'd be crazy. Very cool. Yeah, yeah, there's a there's a studio called Axis in Glasgow, and if you guys have seen, um, I don't like League of Legends, but I love the content they made with music and mm -hmm. their video clips with KDA, mm -hmm. and that would be nuts. Good morning, can That'd you get down? Incredible. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. But, um, Cats are invading. Ah, <laughs> oh, dude, they're just they're never here. Been... So they're like. Uh, I've been watching them like crawl around in your bookshelf and like going over and checking out other things on the edge been, of the screen. They went everywhere, man. They did parkour everywhere. Yes. They're like, we're never in here, so we're gonna leave our traces everywhere. My goodness. But oh, um, I'm a yeah. huge like behind the scenes type person. Like I'm so giddy about behind the scenes stuff. Like since I was a little kid, like when I watched the Star Wars films, I would always like find the behind the scenes and find every little thing that I could find. And then once I found out there's a whole like DVD collection about behind the scenes, I was like, yeah. Oh, so I like I watched all that shit. I was like one kid in my family that watched it in the living room and just like, oh, and they're like, you think this is interesting? I'm like, yes, I don't know what's going on, but it's cool. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> yeah, it. I'm the same way with like Lord of the Rings, too, right? Because like, I, yeah. I, you know, I love all of those special effects because they're practical, physical special yeah. effects. I've never seen the like movies, very, but they look incredible from the behind oh the scenes. Gosh, I know, that's right, I keep, you keep, haven't. Bring, <laughs> We keep talking about this every week, and Phil has to continually disappoint me that he still hasn't watched the movies. How? Uh, <laughs> you have, have to. Have it on VHS. The family has it on VHS. We've never seen it. <laughs> like, you have no excuses then. We rewatched it with um, on Face Server like one or two months ago. That was just I oh, watch it. so good. We watched it. The, the ex you have to watch the extended version. That was there the is first only time one I, version. Yeah, that's the first time I, I watched extended versions. I was like, wow, missing we, a lot in the original movie. We have like eight episodes. Uh, oh gosh, uh, we have like eight episodes left in like uh, JoJo Part Three. I think after we're done mm. watching that, I'm like, all right, that's enough JoJo what for do you like. Mean? We're what gonna do just, watch, just do it now. No, d d I can't. All right, let's just watch it in the podcast. Let's we'll just me. watch it right now. <laughs> I'm, d I'm telling you, there's only one way to watch it, and it's in one sitting, all 11 hours. Oh God, I can't do that. No, <laughs> Dude, I, cannot. I did that bucket, yesterday. Get some snacks. I did that yesterday. Yeah. No. So we'll just do it next weekend. No. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, no? This sounds 11 like a great hours. idea. Absolutely. Not. It's it's 11 hours start to finish not including credits which you don't watch anyways. 
to watch all three extended editions in a row. That's what you did. I don't want no, I don't want That's wanna... exactly what I did. And I I'll do it again. I'll I'm do it every time. I say, I say once a week for three weeks in yes. a row. Thank you. That's <laughs> Sean Beagle's what? like so disappointed. He's like, what the fuck? Just one day. What's well, eleven hours? You're, you game for fourteen hours a day anyways, as it is, right? <laughs> What's Not 11 me. hours to you? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I could edit. I could do stuff. There's a lot of... That, that, don't, I'll do it right back at you. Don't. <laughs> take, a, take, a, take one day off. One day off. 11 hours. And just knock it out. You trust me. You'll, you'll, uh, you'll thank me. You're going to need it's a whole a fucking day to recover from that. <laughs> 11 hours? You're, only, you're awake 16 hours in a day. Yeah, you but only are you eleven of those to do. Watching a lore intensive movie for eleven hours usually. You ever watched a stream for eleven hours? Oh, the lore yeah. intensive. So like the movies. Okay, so this is my thing about the movies. It's a, it's a terrible way to gain lore. All you need to do is just like pay That's... attention to like what's mildly going on. <laughs> Look at the cat. Yeah, I guess. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you're you just swiveling around. Much of the lore <laughs> in the. Yeah, you you really don't. Yeah. Hmm. You don't get like any of like, I, and that's why I always try to do is like, I, I, whenever I introduce someone to Lord of the Rings, I always tell them like, turn your brain off, just watch it and enjoy it. There, you're gonna get a lot of names. A lot of the names sound the same. A lot of the people look the same. A lot of the things that are going on are the same. So just turn your brain off, watch it and enjoy it, and we'll watch it a second time, and then that's when we'll really appreciate the story. That's twenty two hours. And then we watch it. <laughs> and then we watch it a third time, and we drink to it. That's 33 hours! Mm, I'd say before you do that, I watch The Hobbit afterwards, even though they're not as good. <laughs> I'm gonna I watch need to go it. find that fan-made version of The Hobbit where they take all three movies and cut out all the nonsense and just make it one movie. Like, someone, someone took all three movies and cut out just, like, the, the stupid bullshit in all of them, and then that just made one short. movie. It's a two and a half hour movie instead of oh. the like seven and a half that the Hobbit is like all three Hobbits. Listen, I saw I watched uh, I watched the second one like I said three times for Pacific Rim earlier. The mm -hmm. second Hobbit I watched five times at the movie theater. The second Hobbit, the second Hobbit was good. The first Hobbit was not good. The first Hobbit was the one that they had the barrel scene in the in like the the river right from Goblin Town, and like yeah. that entire scene goes on way too long. And the uh, I, uh, this is gonna be nothing to you, Skoy, but the entire <laughs> first Hobbit movie was just uh was just LOL Bomber is fat. That was the entire movie. It was just yeah. it was just you know large Hobbit joke or large dwarf joke after large dwarf joke. Just like that, that's all the it was. Movie? It, it pretty much was. Oh, no. Because, like, every punchline was just on Bomber being a large oh. dwarf. Poor guy. The second movie was good. Yeah, the, the third second movie, movie okay. if you like dragons, the second one is going to blow your shit. Because, yeah. for me, that's the best, uh, like, that's the best dragon <laughs> on screen. Apart from Game of Thrones, probably. And the thing is, that is different in the second Hobbit is just Smog's a character. Like, he... Oh. Yeah, Isn't all his voice... Benedict Cumberbatch. Yeah, he also yeah. did the live action Bulbasaur cabbage cap patch suit thing and the whole <laughs> Wait, face. What? <laughs> what? Have you ever seen what? that video? Have you, ever, have you ever seen that video where it's uh, like a hundred ways to mispronounce Benedict Cumberbatch? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> one of them is Bulbasaur cabbage patch. That's my favorite uh, one. <laughs> Benedict, a good old me. This has something to do with Pokemon, um, probably. <laughs> but it's just it's a hundred ways to mispronounce his name. It's great. Amazing. Yeah, but that his performance in that movie is great, and the dragon is just fucking nuts. That's just crazy. So yeah, no, I, I went like five say... times just for the dragon. <laughs> <laughs> I will say the Hobbit's most redeeming quality is the actors like a hundred percent the characters feel believable they are believable they actually got amazing actors to portray these characters because like you you get people like uh like daniel radcliffe in whatever movie i see him in he's still harry potter and that's like a, so unfortunate because like i mean I, i'm sure he does not care at this point because he Harry Potter's probably made him so much money at this point. Yeah. It's just like it, it doesn't it doesn't matter anymore. And he can pretty yeah. much just do whatever he wants and people can just go and see the movie. And it's, he's still just Harry Potter, right? But like it if for like a viewer, anytime I see Daniel Radcliffe, he's he's Harry Potter. Anytime I see uh uh, uh Toby Maguire, Spider-Man, yeah. yeah. 
every single time. It's like, oh, that's that's, that's Spider Man. I feel that right? for some actors, and, and they have to like be in like more roles. <clears throat> I feel like to be able to get out of that rut of being yeah. like, this is what this character is. It's like, no, this more than that. This is what yeah. yeah sometimes we're stuck with like that label for the rest of the curry, and it's just like it's it's good and bad in the sense that when you're such an icon for a role that was revolutionary. It makes your career, but after that, it's kind of like maybe you're stuck with it for yeah, well, 25 years. And... That's why the character for Tom Holland, a lot of people are just like, why, why is it like a kid, like a sophomore year kid playing a role that's like a 21 year old? It's like, that's because he's actually like 23, 21. Yeah. But people it's are actually, just like, you know, yeah. But he mid-20s. looks. Mid 20s. Yeah, no, he's yeah. just like like almost mid 20s and people are thinking that he's actually younger than he is it's like no the, the role he's playing is perfect because that's and for that video game was that's how old he was yes how old he was so yeah was, yeah <laughs> i would yeah. but like i i think i think like the lord of the rings and the hobbit movies did it so crazily though because never once do i look at elijah wood and i immediately think of frodo which is like really insane to me like i i, I always felt that I don't know. I think I think he got lucky. Like Elijah Wood got lucky that it was young enough in his career that he his 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 face changed as he got older, right? Like he looks different now than he did in in um in the Lord of the Rings movies. But plus like there was enough special effects around that for me Frodo is a hobbit, not yeah. Elijah Wood, right? Yeah. So I I my brain is sufficiently tricked and like I don't know, I think when a movie can can sell a character rather than sell an actor, that's when it's the most successful. Yeah. Facial hair does a Definitely. huge difference too. <laughs> oh my gosh, dude, I shaved uh, like two I weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> I shaved oh, at the beginning of the month. When that happened, holy oh shit. my gosh, I looked like a different human being. Yeah, you look I so just different. I didn't recognize myself at all. I like I would like look in the mirror and be like, oh, who are you? <laughs> that was me when I dyed my hair blue. Back. Yeah. <laughs> gosh. Yeah, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm in middle school again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, no, that's why I feel like uh, actors like Ewan McGregor, like he's one of my favorite actors, love him to pieces. Uh, yeah. Like he plays uh, in Star Wars. He played in Star Wars. He played in uh, a lot of the movies. I forgot what it was called. It was like a tsunami in uh, Japan. It was, oh, uh, it's not prom. I'm looking it up. It's With the two Japan kids? Movie. Yeah, the two kids. Uh, actually, one of them was Tom Holland. The kid, one of the kids was Tom yeah, Holland. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. That movie. Oh, that that's the type of movie me. when I was young. I held that, my breath like, in that movie. That like, really scares shit. me. Tsunamis yeah. are probably like the natural disaster I fear the most. Yes. Yeah. And that movie fucking terrorized me. <laughs> it terrorized me too, but it was uh, that would be one movie that I would watch like a million times over. Someone puts it on, I would watch it immediately because it's like they, really the the for me the actors did so amazingly. It was so believable that they were a family to me, and just the actors that played their roles were amazing. I I, I just loved it. But like what I was getting to was. Ewan McGregor, um, I feel he can play any role he wants, and it'll like he will be that role. It's not like oh, this is Ewan yeah. McGregor playing a film. Yeah. Oh yeah, because like yeah, I, I, like so. Star Wars was successful like that too, right? Like it made very believable, very unique characters that set them aside from the actor. Mm -hmm. You know, I would say probably outside of um, Luke, fuck's his name, uh, the actor. Mark Hamill. Yeah, outside of Mark Hamill, but Mark Hamill also does a lot just Joker. like it in social media and just like in his life too to blatantly explicitly remind everyone that he is Mark Hamill. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but like, you know, Ewan McGregor doesn't doesn't do that, right? It's like I don't I don't see him as I like whenever I see uh him in a movie, it's it's never like, you know, oh it's him. It's like no, he's he's playing his character. Yeah. That's powerful movies like that where you're just gonna remember the performance itself, like yeah. There's, that's kind of how I walked away from the latest Joker. Like as a movie itself, I walked out of there probably drained because it was a really dark, uh, really really dark it like mental really... movie. Uh, I can't say that I enjoyed the movie much more than what's his name, uh, Joaquin Phoenix, like that played Joker. His performance was just. <laughs> it was incredible. Like I call that it was movie crazy. disturbingly amazing. That's what I call yeah. that movie. Yeah. Yeah. 
I don't, I'm not sure yeah. I'd rewatch it again, but his performance is just... Like, oh, it's just dark. It's, it's just really dark. Too dark. <laughs> People were laughing yeah. at some scenes. I'm like, you kidding? What the fuck? Yeah, no. <laughs> no. no. Yeah, no. And the movie theater, when I went to watch it, it's just the atmosphere was just so heavy and like i remember when people were walking out of the of the room like people were whispering as if you don't need to whisper anymore like the movie <laughs> yeah. the heavy the, the heaviness of like what was communicated to that movie was just kind of like disturbing to a lot of people yeah yeah it's crazy just ah mm -hmm. so good <laughs> art always elicits a response oh yeah yeah an emotional response like that like good artwork will just do that and i think i think people forget that all a lot of the time too it's that like movies are someone's artwork right yeah. Guillermo del toro taught me that with uh with legitimately shape of water right because like <laughs> that was a that was a movie that was made not for like that was a movie that was that he wanted to make that wasn't a movie that somebody else wanted to make. That wasn't a movie that, like, the, that, you know, a gigantic conglomerate came to him and said, we want to make that. It is probably, the, like, the best thing for him in his career that um, Universal Studios did not contract him to make, you know, uh, what was it, like, the... Uh, the 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 thing or the the swamp thing whatever whatever is it because it was it was because he he like wanted to make a universal's monster studio like that's where the shape of water came from but he wanted it to mm. to make it like this like dark you know, romance story and they the universal studios told him no like you we don't want that that's not like the movie that we want so he's like okay well i'm gonna do it anyways <laughs> yeah and like mm. and, and that's like really when it shows that like a a director is an artist in the intent that like when they have a vision and they want to execute something and they want to create an illicit emotional response, they can do that versus mm -hmm. like a Marvel movie, which is designed explicitly for the intent of the entertainment of the masses. Um, there are movies that are like designed to leave an impact on you. Yeah. And I think he won best picture, the Oscar that year. No with yeah. shape of water. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the same thing. Um, mm. Dune, cool. like Denis Villeneuve said about his movie. He's like, there's an interview I watched not too long ago. And he said, well, he read the books as a young guy and that marked him. But he said, I made this movie for me. Like, this is, it I made won. this. Yeah. He's like, I made this movie for me as like the young boy that read these books and got absolutely like captivated. I want to make a movie that illustrate my experience with the books. It wasn't a movie to like sell 500 toys or, mm -hmm. you know, like the real um, derived products from that. He just made that for him. And I think yeah. that's why I haven't seen the movie. I'm dying to go see it, but people keep saying it's a masterpiece. So I just can't What's wait the movie to. Called? Dune. Dune. Oh, that was okay. The... That's what we're talking. Yeah, that's what we're talking yeah. about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, are we still talking about Shape of Water? You should watch Shape of Water though. So Shape oh, yeah, of that's Water. That's what I thought won... you were talking about. Shape of Water. The Shape of Water won not one but four Oscars in 2018. <laughs> Shit. Best achievement in directing, best motion picture of the year, best achievement in music, um, written for motion pictures, and best achievement in production design. It won four Oscars. Insane. Yeah, and that's really crazy because when I started at Mr. X, uh, I had no clue, but I was put on a project that's called Narcos Mexico, which is mm -hmm. a, a Netflix TV show. Cool and, show, uh, by the way. Yeah, it was really nice. I didn't watch the original one, but I watched Mexico and I thought it was sick. Uh, didn't work on the second season, but the first season was really dope. My first, uh, my first day at the office, we were like, they came to my desk and they told me, you're going to work on this show. It's crazy. We have to add the biggest weed field that was ever cultivated on this planet. I was like, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's dope yeah, that was all CGI. yeah we had to do that was all sweet... cgi yeah oh yeah dude <laughs> well they that's built insane. they built the front row yeah oh, okay and then, and, then they, okay. and then we did the extension that went to, yeah like the mountain caps in the background that was Jeez, that's awesome. actually really cool that's cool yeah but uh that was a really small project like eight people and um i had a really good time with my supervisor on that project and little did i know he's the supervisor that did shape of water a couple of years before i started working at the oh. studio and i was like losing my shit i was like no fucking way i'm talking to the guy that supervised shape of water and <laughs> When they announced, when they sent that generic email about Monster Hunter starting up 
in post-production, there was like this sentence saying the visual supervisor on this is going to be Trey Harrell, that dude. And he was like sitting across from me and I was like, no <laughs> fucking way. <laughs> like, you're going to be on Monster Hunter? He was like, yeah. I'm like, cool. Can I work <laughs> on it too? <laughs> yeah, and I ended, I did. And that's really funny because that guy was in Montreal for one project and he was going back to Toronto. And uh, yeah. I think it's really because of him that I ended up being able to to hop on a project at first because they give me concept art to do. Hello, good night. Can't be on the desk, buddy. But <laughs> <No. laughs> why? Yeah. Um, That's so cool. Yeah, I did concept art on the project, which is something I didn't do before. And uh, that supervisor is the one that decided to give me that work. And apparently, people were a bit. Um, unsure because they were like did laura do concept art before because like she might not be able to deliver and that supervisor was like i give it to laura because she's a big fan of the game if it works out in the end great if it doesn't it doesn't but i just want to give her the experience to work on it because i know she's a fan of it so like little that's things cool that like that ants like that's that's actually yeah. really nice like someone put that kind of well, faith in you like without knowing what you were capable of yet and, and you were able to to capitalize on that that's awesome yeah, yeah. oh yeah I, t I sent him a, like an email at the very end of the project and i was like thank you like i don't know if i would have had the opportunity to work on it if it weren't for you but uh i w i got really lucky where when i got hired i had the chance to work with him immediately without knowing he was going to be on monster honor and we worked well together so for him it was probably a lower risk because he knew how i worked but mm -hmm. uh, at the same time, he was like, I might oh. just make somebody happy. And if it doesn't work out, then somebody else can like fix behind her. But he just wanted to give me that chance. And uh, apparently he that's didn't cool. regret. So that's, that's so cool. fucking cool. I always love those kind yeah. of stories where they like they build from these connections that they made. They keep the people are able to like go into uh, more different projects and like. You... That's so cool. I, I don't know. I'm just like freaking <laughs> out giddy about it. Uh, uh yeah no i felt really privileged honestly yeah. because uh like I, I hadn't been working at that at that studio for that long like less than a year and people were trusting me on the biggest project that was going on right now for like one of the main environment that was going to be shown in the movie and uh it was a big risk too because we were dealing directly with capcom mm -hmm. so like that was also <laughs> stressful but exciting to deal with um but i'm forever gonna remember like there's there's something i did for the movie that ultimately didn't make it the cut that happens a lot you just mm -hmm. do something and then the director's like no and in, in the edit it doesn't work out so we're just gonna scratch it but um yeah i had to do a concept of a plant and like an endemic life and i ended up grabbing like an antidote i recreated like an antidote herb and <laughs> The endemic life I ended up sneaking in was, I didn't know at that point, but there's these in world, they look like dragonfly with a really long tail. And I think they're yeah. called almond fly or auger fly. Almond flies. Yeah. 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 Anyways, little did I know there was two different variant of them. One appears mm -hmm. when it's sunny and one appears when it's raining. And in the shot that I made, it was sunny, and I the one that I included in was the rainy day one. And then big mistake. We send it to Capcom, and the feedback was like, "We love it, great. Uh, you just need to change your endemic life to the other one because in continuity that doesn't work. And the Lord these ones only appear when it's rainy." And I was like, "Fuck." Oh. <laughs> Fuck. I you should have gotten if you if you collected all the endemic life you would have known <laughs> <laughs> I gotta be the completionist only difference is like one is yellow and the other one is blue and I one's think blue like, yep yeah and i put like the <laughs> blue one i was like Fuck, yep. man. just reset <laughs> it in with cooler too just change the hue just mm. like all right here you go <laughs> like, man. Just the slider. no but at yeah. the end they were like at the end they were like oh we love the idea and i think that was recreated like super well but in the edit it it ends up not being in the movie yeah. i was like fuck mm. <laughs> but, i could have had but, that yeah Still but but for it anyways so like it's cool to to be put into a situation um 
to be able to create something that you have a connection with, right? Like being yeah. in a career that lets you be creative in a way that doesn't hinder your own process that allows you to explore new processes and, and learn and grow and expand like that is, is so rewarding is so, so interesting. Right. And a lot of people don't make that, that, uh, you know, that leap into a career like that, you know, and, and that's, that's very exciting that like, you've been able to, to do this. And it's, it's really, it's honestly, it's really inspiring that, that you have been able to take something that you are so passionate about and something that you enjoy doing so much. I mean, like legitimately, even on your free time, you're making the monster hunter render artworks. Yeah. And, and those are always so cool. And I mean, I, I can only imagine like it takes uh, some skill from like knowing how to create your backgrounds. And then like, also you're t learning new skills about how to manipulate and, and render these models. You're doing this for fun. Artwork from yeah. It. yeah. And you're doing that for fun. And like, and, and some of that, you know, some of that does parallel, you know, your actual work. And I, I think that's, I think that's really neat. That's, that's something to aspire to. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. Yeah. It all started, uh, just wanting to do more personal artwork outside of my professional career, because honestly, I probably didn't do personal art for uh, 12 years, honestly, mm -hmm. like from way, at least way before I started college. And that was nine years ago. Um, yeah, and then I would always use the excuse that like all my creative energy was going to my work and I didn't want to do anything creative outside of outside of work. Um but uh <clears throat> ultimately with things like Unreal Engine that are starting to be really really a uh, hot topic in filming now because they use it a lot for virtual production yeah oh really uh, huh. yeah hmm. so did you watch the mandalorian or yes. heard a bit of it i i haven't watched it I, excuse me i've watched the first episode and that's really it. good yeah so that one is probably one of the earliest one in virtual production but they're what they're doing a lot lately it's expensive though because the setup for that is quite intense did you just rip my door open? My cat, <laughs> you know what? Give me a second. I'll get him out of here. <laughs> the cats have invaded. The, have. It's their room now. I, I would highly recommend watching the uh, rest of Mandalorian, though. I need story, to, yeah. yeah uh, the story for it is incredible. Uh, my friend gave me his login. I uh, just, you know, I'm too lazy to watch I've television shows. <laughs> Do you want me to give you more logins? I can give you more logins. <laughs> Yeah, go <laughs> give me another it. login, please. Yeah. I'm gonna need your uh, Funimation, your Hulu, your Disney Plus. Uh, if you got Paramount Plus, I'll take that too, man. I used to, <laughs> but then I realized I have way too many subscriptions. But I was like, I, I actually need to do Paramount Plus back. because I am I am a huge Star Trek fan, and when I say huge, I mean I'm just kind of like obsessed with watching the shows over and over again. And they have three new uh, Star Trek shows on Paramount Plus, and I would very much like to watch those. Oh shit! I didn't even know that was a thing. I'm losing track of how many streaming devices there are. Like I'm just so many. Yeah. Yeah. I canceled Disney Plus like a couple months ago. <gasps> it's just too much. Yeah, it's just too much, man. Between Crunchyroll and Netflix, I'm, well, I'm set for a while. You that's, watch anime? That's like fair, though. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Del hates me because like whenever there's an anime brought up, I get excited. We were doing so uh, well. We were doing so well. Uh, talking about anime. anime? No, no, no. I like no, anime. He, he likes anime. I, just doesn't watch it religiously. So I don't what watch, anime do I don't you watch? watch anime. <gasps> oh no! What's <laughs> happening again? No, I don't watch that many. I'm the kind of person that like I get hooked on things and then I rewatch them like once a year or so. Like, I'm the same way. uh, fuck. Wolf Rain is one of my favorite animes of all time. Mm. We rewatched it with Faye again. Like, well, dude, he just reopened my door again. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> Whatever. Um, it's his room now, not yours. Yeah, it belongs to him. Wolf Rain, um, Helsing. I mm. love, absolutely love Helsing. Um, what else? Code Geese or Code Gias? I don't know how you pronounce Code it. Geass, that yeah. was a big one Code for Goose. me, too. <laughs> Uh, I haven't finished My Hero Academia Season 5. I don't know if it's finished at this point, but oh, it's no, been yeah. going on for a while. Season 5? I thought that show just yeah. came out. Yeah. No, they add that to two. It's just like, oh yeah, Season 6 is coming out next month. Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> just no started. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Haikyuu I watched last year too that oh, I liked a lot that was good and I don't fucking look like I don't like sports I don't usually but Haikyuu was like 
characters are all so amazing. good. I love them. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, I'm a bit sport. rusty. Uh, what I've been watching Volleyball. this week and last week, oh. and I'm going to nerd out for a while if you guys have watched it too. Uh, did you guys watch Arcane on Netflix? The League of I Legends I haven't watched show? it yet. I no. want to watch it. It looks good. It's I'm not next. a League of Legends fan, it's... but like, it looks really good. Yeah, I don't, I don't like leagues. I don't support riots, mm -hmm. but uh, everything artistic from KDA we talked earlier to Arcane now, um, they have my undying affection and worship because uh that's crazy that's just yeah, crazy. I, I heard ah. from like the writing to the animation style to the choreography of the show like it's it it, it all it the hits way all the check it's marks edited like the transition from one shot to another and like the animation the art style is like incomparable with anything i've seen before the storytelling yeah. is great. I can appreciate it and watch it, and I understand the lore without having to play the games, which is amazing. Yeah, that's, because that's it's, good. Yeah, it's the backstory of one of their main characters, if I understand correctly. So it's it's welcoming from anybody that's either knowledgeable or not knowledgeable. And uh, I'm not sure if it's true, but I think I saw on Twitter this morning that it's like the most watched TV show on Netflix now uh, since Squid Games. Really? So I think it's wow. Like, yeah, That's I big. think it's doing some crazy numbers, and it's cool because they release it. They release them in batch of three episodes. So like last okay. week we had from one to three, and then yesterday we got from uh, four to six. Oh, it's cool. That's and uh, they're like 40, 40 minutes to an hour episode. Yeah. Because okay. yeah, when you watch animes and you get like one episode of twenty minutes per week, you're just like, <laughs> yeah, you, it, it kills you. Like little, it's like a nibble. But like yeah, the thing it's is like with nothing. like with Crunchyroll or just anime in general, I looked up how much anime there is currently. There's over six thousand shows of anime that is out like currently, and I'm just like. Yeah, no, it's understandable why they do it once a week because it's just like they want you to see the other shows they have on their site. Because if they just yeah. release all of them at once, then you're not really going to go back and watch it. anything. Yeah. 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 So that's why I say it makes sense for about... Crunchyroll, but for Netflix, I don't know. I don't know about <laughs> Netflix, guys, they want you to I'm... binge. I'm not Netflix able to watch so much like shit. five shows at the same time. I can't do that. Oh, God, no. <laughs> I just no. Uh, I usually dedicate I, myself to like one or two games at a time, or like one or two shows at a time, and that's about it. I'm not able to, to like play five games or watch mm. yeah five TV shows at the same time. I just I, I can know, barely I like play one myself. game. <laughs> yeah. Right, like I, <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to like all my time's taken up streaming and speed running, and and then like the time that I am watching TV. Like I I, I, I did try to do this, so I tried uh because because last week we talked um with jung shi like a bunch about anime and so i added a bunch of shows uh to to my wish list and so i tried to start um uh, dora hidora mm -hmm. and i turned on the first episode but i realized that it was two o'clock in the morning when i finally like sat down to watch because i was like d just doing other shit like I, I was like streaming and then like i had to you know you know organize my vod afterwards and i wanted to you know put out a tweet and do all this stuff and then like it's like okay it's like it's time for bed like, i grab my tablet i grab my phone i go upstairs i get in bed i turn on netflix i'm like it's 2 a.m i gotta shut this shit off yeah, I'm gonna sleep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, so like if, if it's if it's late at night like that like i'm uh, i can't watch a new show because like I'm, I'm i gotta go to bed yeah, you know, and all my days off, I'm usually like playing other games, you know, like face rolling on uh, Final Fantasy right now. So in my free time in Final Fantasy, I'm trying to like watch something else on the side too. But you know, sometimes yeah. it doesn't it doesn't work. Yeah, I multitasking feel like... with anime and subs doesn't work. It's been it doesn't. <laughs> I, that's why I, I can't stand I can't do subs because I want to be doing something else while I'm watching a show. Yeah. Right. Like I don't have that much time as it is, so I, I want to try to do as sometimes. much as I possibly can in my in my free time. I, so I give me a out. dub. Yeah. No. Call me a normie. Give me a dub, and I'm gonna have it open on. I'm gonna have. I'm gonna have you know. Dora Hidoro on this screen, and I'm gonna have Final Fantasy on this screen, and I'm gonna have Discord on this screen, and then yeah. each of all my attention will be separated equally, and I will only get a third of the show. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, oh, I commit myself fully. I'm gonna watch it with the sub because I can't do dubs. I just bleh. that's fine. Nah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. so all. I put Everyone it. Everyone watches. Yeah. like I don't. Yeah. I never understand that argument where it's just like. 
oh, uh, like, oh, you don't watch the original source material. It's just like, well, guess oh, what? Everything you. is dubbed. Because they do the animation yeah. first before anything. So, fuck you. <laughs> Technically, yeah. it's a dub. <laughs> however, however you enjoy, consume that media, man. Like, Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> There ain't um, no el elitism here. No. No. Mm -mm. <laughs> like, I love it no, when No, but it should. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So go on. <clears throat> no, I was just going to say, like, VO is kind of how I picked up English anyway, so I kind of like to just whatever original version it came in to just watch it as it is. Yeah. Especially with, like, real action, because, like, lip sync, uh, like, the lips not matching for me is a big... Uh, I can't do live action. Immor immersion's broken. <laughs> oh, <laughs> broken I can't completely. do live action or... No. Yeah, live action dub. I have to do stuff for live action. Like I just yeah. Wait, so Skoy, when you watched Squid Game, did you um did you watch the sub of it? No, I watched it in English dub. I'm kidding. Go. Okay. <laughs> well, no, no, no. Like, like I, I'm actually no. curious because like no. I'm, I I was gonna watch it and I hadn't decided if I was gonna watch the dub or the sub because I, would, I absolutely recommend watching it in the uh, the sub. Kore watching Korean with the subtitles because like it, okay. we watched the English dub <clears throat> like after we watched everything. We watched a few snippets of the English dub. Oh. It, yeah. I mean, yeah, that's the, the, that was uh, cause, like the trailer when I scrolled through it, like it was playing the trailer in English and I was like, oh, wow, the voice actors for these just have like no emotion. They're yeah, just no. reading a script like what? blank face. Absolutely recommend in Korean. Yeah. Like, Liz mm -hmm. and I watched it together and holy shit, we were literally destroyed. I don't know if you saw my tweet about it, but like, I saw it. Yeah, I saw your tweet. <laughs> I was literally I have not been that emotionally invested in a show in a very long time. I was, really? Yeah, no, like that show literally destroyed me and i was it reminded <laughs> me of like a lot of uh family members and a lot of my friends in the past and it, it literally crushed me <laughs> i don't know if i'm mentally prepared for that holy shit no <laughs> episode six that's all i'm saying Oof. there's shows like that where uh i had to watch like maybe one episode a week because they were so like heavy and traumatizing and it was a show mm -hmm. about real events that happened to that I, I just had to take a step back, even though there was like, it, they released it all at once. It was the Chernobyl show from HBO. Yeah. That, that shit wrecked rough. me. <laughs> that yeah. shit wrecked me. Ooh, that was heavy. I'm glad I watched it, but it's one of these shows like Chernobyl, the, um, the anime uh, Devilman Crybaby, where it's like, I watched it once. That shit is shelved for life. Like, that's just so yeah. fucking dark and heavy and difficult to watch. It's interesting though, I, because a part yeah. of you just like this happened, like what? But uh, when they touch such a heavy subject, like yeah, I'm gonna watch one episode every three days or once a week, and that's how I need to pace myself because that, mm -hmm. the negativity otherwise just fucking consumes me. I'm just like no. <laughs> Same here. Like that consumed me. Like my mood for like streaming for the few days afterwards like really changed because i was just like yeah it literally destroyed me like that's why i have like a lot of manga that's just sitting there sometimes because like the story for it like it's amazing like i have berserk i have tokyo ghoul but i have to pace myself and like read it like yeah. once a month because i can't that story is telling is so dark but it's really good but yeah ah. yeah. oh yeah yeah when, berserk uh, especially a little bit <laughs> just a little bit at a time because uh yeah it's it's weird how like these artistic media can kind of make you feel that way sometimes for the worse and the best but yeah, yeah sometimes it's just like okay i'm gonna take a couple of days to chill and reflect on that like why <laughs> yeah. is this disturbing me so much <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah there's and and there's there's a, a certain uh, argument to be made that like you know the the audience is the the biggest like you, know, you, you as a person how you are impacted by media you know it's going to be variable and like for for some people they're more empathic than others like we you know we we wear our emotions on our sleeves and and when something happens to a character that we enjoy or we like or we resonate with like we we feel it personally too you know that happens i mean that happens a lot with me uh like when when shows touch on like the topic of death right like death is like such a like a like a scary topic as it is and you know uh whenever that gets brought up in in a show like i kind of always get like oh like i need to i need to calm down here <laughs> i need, I need yeah. to take, take a moment like i remember yeah. i finished uh i don't know if you ever watched it but it's a it's like a sitcom kind of television show it's called the good place it's about I the know. afterlife 
it's a really fun show. There's, I think it's four seasons or three seasons or four seasons. It was a lot of fun. I enjoyed watching it the entire way through. It's like this lighthearted take on the afterlife. Um, and, and it's like this, the, it follows these four characters the entire time. And it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a really good show. It's a, it's a sitcom, sitcom. like for all intents and purposes. Um, what? Squid? What was it called? The Good Place. It's it's a really good watch. Um, I loved all the actors. I loved all the characters. I loved all the set design, all the building of of this world and the lore of it and all that. But it ends on like such a heavy note. Like the entire last season is such a heavy note that I finished the show and I, I mean, just like you, I, I was I was feeling it for days. Like I couldn't <laughs> like really process, you know, emotionally yeah. what I was feeling for that. It's it's so crazy to like see like how differently it affects people because like yeah. I watched it at the same time as one of my friends, and he's like, "Oh yeah, I thought it was a good watch." I was like, "You thought it was a good watch? I can barely function over here." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but it speaks yeah. a lot. Like even if it affected you, quote unquote, negatively, the fact that it even like brought you to feel that way just speaks mm-hmm. a lot on how the shows like uh successfully hit those, those yeah. topics and those difficult subject yeah it's, it's like we were talking about like if if a piece of artwork can elicit an emotional response it was successful whether wh- whatever that emotional response uh, response was it was successful you know and yeah. um and like i always because like because uh, you you say here like negatively i i still don't look at that as a negative experience right i don't think that that was a negative emotion i think that was yeah. I, I i usually try not to like attribute this is this is sounding like you know uh frou-frou bullshit mentality stuff but i don't <laughs> i don't view emotions uh you know as like a negative thing i think any emotion is a good thing mm-hmm. and even that like putting myself in that situation to face that kind of more or less that fear is is i I still think it's healthy right because like you know it's 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 it may be scary to remind yourself that like that's something that you that you are not comfortable with but it it's also like kind of healthy to recognize that that is something that you are uncomfortable with Mm -hmm. yeah no definitely and i don't know about you guys but it's that kind of effect surprisingly i have it more often with shows and movies than games themselves yeah Uh, i can call a few like only a few games that like really either for days or for a couple hours after I put it down or finished it that I felt like uh, still a connection to it. Um, but like my favorite game of all time being Shadow of the Colossus, like every time I replay that Ooh, game or see people play, play that game, that. like that lingers. That's just, yeah. oh yeah. I could speak for hours about Shadow of the Colossus. <laughs> That's awesome. You both played it? No, oh, I need to. I only have ever watched it played I'm so i've sorry. watched <laughs> uh, i i can't i can't I, I never owned a playstation 2 so like i never was yeah. able to play it um you own a ps4 now i own a ps4 but i refuse to use it fair so. <laughs> Shadow the colossus they remade it entirely i know they did one. and it looks amazing and i watched the playthrough of it entirely i watched a friend play through it i watched a streamer play through it i watched a lot of speed runs of it i love that game just like in its design and its intent i won't play it though <laughs> That's, I, I feel like that way for a lot of games though, where it's just like, yeah. uh, like I love, I enjoy watching, uh, there's some people that would enjoy watching like certain games that I would never buy myself. One, because like, <clears throat> it's just a lot of money to just throw down. And then for me, myself, I'm knowing that I would only spend like an hour or so on it and then like go back to playing the other game I've been playing, but I would take the time to like watch someone else play it. So that free. <laughs> Shin Megami Tensin and Persona are those games for me. They're games that everyone tells me I should play and that they're amazing and that they're they're fantastic. But like for me, for like my mentality when it comes to playing a video game, I'd get so bored with that. But I love watching people play them because like, you know, either they, they're they're invested in it in a different way than I would be. And so I get to enjoy it more because they're doing the things that I just wouldn't do in that game. I would literally if you if you force me to play Persona 5, I would literally take that game and try to finish it as fast as possible. Like it's not even it's like not oh jow the, the speedrunner mm. yeah no it, and it doesn't like i wouldn't take my time to appreciate the story the lore like what's happening and that's what that game is about and so i i don't have an interest in that right because and, and like basically like you were saying like it doesn't come like with games that like emotional response and i think i know for me it's because when i play a video game i'm not playing it for the story mostly i'm playing it for the gameplay experience and if it leaves me tidbits of story like i appreciate that uh like celeste does it really well celeste is an entirely you know gameplay oriented game but it has like this this very short 
very to the point story happening in the background that you kind of get small pieces of in between big sections of gameplay. And so that is something that I can really enjoy. Same thing with um, a game, uh, another indie game, uh, Indivisible. I played the crap out of that game. I love that game. I love the design of it. I love the intent of it. I love the story behind it. I love everything about that game. But you had these really big gameplay sections that were only interrupted with small little story parts. And so that made it much more enjoyable for me. Shin Megami Tensin, Persona 5. I don't want to watch a movie. I'm good. Even yeah. Final Fantasy games, I just can't do it. Like Final Fantasy 13, I've tried to play four times now, and I'd get about like six hours into it and I'd just be bored, I'd be bored out of my mind. And I don't know if that's like a problem because everyone says Final Fantasy 13 is the worst Final Fantasy game, but it's the only one I, I played. Just, yeah, see, right? Like it's the only one that I played too because I had an Xbox 360 when it came out, and it's like this big, amazing thing like Final Fantasy 13. It's like, okay, let me try this out. And I bought it then. It was five discs and i what didn't get past <laughs> i think it was three discs and there was like two other like extra bullshit things but it was a, it was a three disc game and i only ever got past disc one what the fuck what? i played that game for a while when it came out but uh i remember it was advertised as like an open world and it doesn't get it doesn't become open one until like the half of the end. game, which is probably yeah. like 60 hours into it I and, uh, at, yeah. at the mo at the height of it, I had 16 hours into the game, and I was still like nowhere near the open world section. But like my friend keeps telling me, it's like it becomes open world. Just keep playing it. I'm like, when uh, I uh, yeah, I played at coming. least 40 hours into it and never got. To... <laughs> well, the thing is, it was my first FF2. Okay, yeah. So like at some point, You're I was your like, time with it. fuck the little enemies, and I bypassed a lot of enemies. And at one point in the game, I got to a boss where I was under leveled and I put the game down for six months because I had to go backtrack, mm -hmm. fight enemies, level up and come back. And I was like, fuck this. I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, FF13 to me was fine. Uh, it was just incredibly linear. If you came from somebody that got the game advertised as it's going to be open world eventually, it's really yeah. fucking linear at the beginning and it gets repetitive. But the system combat was really fun. The paradigm and, um, system is very cool. I really like yeah. that a lot. I yeah, that was my favorite part of the entire game. Yeah, the summons were cool. The fight were were not so cool for the summons with like the timer <laughs> and shit. But uh, yeah, no, it was a good game. Just like I think when it came out, I was a little bit younger, maybe like fourteen, and I didn't spend that much time gaming back then. So like a game like Final Fantasy thirteen was just too much of an investment in time. Yeah. Yeah. Squid, what was your first Final Fantasy game? <laughs> uh, technically, I I got it on on the on Steam, so it was like Final Fantasy VII, um, classic version. So I only played like from what my friend told me was essentially disc one of the game. So the port yeah. like from point A to point B of that disc one, that's where I played. But it, it was pretty good. I honestly really enjoyed it. The story was fun. Oh yeah, and... Final Fantasy VII original is an amazing game. Yeah. Did you play the remake? The first part? I have not. No. I also realized I it was free for a portion of time and I didn't get it. And I should have. <laughs> ah! I've been uh, <laughs> thrown tomatoes for saying that in the past, but as somebody that uh, never played the original and watched uh, people play the remake on Twitch, that is hands down the most boring shit I've ever watched on Twitch. And I'm sorry for saying that. I'm sure it's probably great to play, but if you remove the nostalgic aspect of it, for me as a viewer, that shit looks so fucking slow paced and boring. Like, and I tried several streamers to so just because I wanted to know what the fuck the hype was about. And mm -hmm. I tried to sit in so many Twitch chat to watch people play that game. And I just, my attention was never retained for more than 30 minutes and I would just leave. It's a love letter to Final Fantasy VII. That's all it is. It's and from like what people have been telling me, it's a remake, not like a remaster, because they change a lot of the story. They introduce new things. They take things out. They're they're trying, I, like from from my understanding, that they're they're trying to um, circumvent some like knowledge that you would need to have known prior to playing it. But then like even even still like I totally agree with you. The only like the times that I tune into the games are like the most boring sequences ever. Like there's an there's a 15 minute sequence where you're picking flowers with Aerith. And I'm like, sure. I'm 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 certain that someone that, you know, played this game and that is incredibly invested in the uh the characters, you know, would would 
would really enjoy this but like yeah it's it's not a streaming game you know it's it's definitely just like hit on the nostalgia factor for like four hours and then after that you better have like a fun game yeah two games were like that for me on twitch that same year and it was ff7 remake and uh fuck what's that name called death stranding <laughs> oh, oh death stranding yeah. Yeah, i watched the Couldn't playthrough watch it, of that. man like fedex fantasy fedex uh delivery simulator like yeah. i mean legitimately it's such like a cool idea and concept but the entire game is so tedious that it's it it has the animal crossing effect where the entire game is designed in practice to slow down your progression so you have to play it for a very long time animal crossing does that to a t it's one of the biggest flaws with the game the fact that you can only craft like one thing at a time right you can only craft one bait at a time in animal crossing you could have a hundred of these clams on you you can only craft one bait at a time if that tedium is designed in there to slow down like your progression in the game and all of death stranding in my opinion is like that i can't wa i've watched so many friends try to play this fucking game and every single time i get so bored unless they're at the very end of the game where they've unlocked everything that removes all the tedium like yeah. I, I you, you just can't you can't play the game i can't watch streams of death stranding that's one of the games i can't watch as a stream uh for me i'm uh, i've watched i think it was jess yeah jack the guy i watched him play it uh but he edited like it's a video so they edited it down for like the yeah. viewable experience to make it more watchable and he was also commentating like a lot of things that are behind the scenes about the game because he got some information about it it was really interesting to watch and like what he's like gathering and putting pieces together that i find that interesting like in video form yeah. it's a fun watch I'll enjoy but a it. stream? Rough. I used to mod for somebody that like streamed it for weeks on, and I was like, man. <laughs> <sighs> like, if you the like thing. the game, you like the game. I am, yeah. I am certain that it is an enjoyable experience if you want to dump hundreds of hours. I mean, probably not even, if you want to dump 100 hours into Delivery Simulator, by all means. Yeah. There are some of us that have played far stupider games like uh, like, like Lawn Mowing Sim or like just The Sims. Just like in general. Like, there are, I'm there playing are Jurassic World 2 games. right now. Like I'm exactly. making parts and shit. <laughs> there, are, yeah. there are far stupider simulation games, but the fact that this, I mean, like, the only thing that is interesting to the game in my opinion is like the story but it being locked behind so much tedium and like just the the, the all the tasks that you have to complete is the only thing that is pushing me away from actually playing it and learning it yeah you literally no, just watch the a... cutscenes and you understand what's going on i'll just go watch a speed run man <laughs> Honestly, yeah, because that's what we're saying is like i'm sure i'm sure i have no interest personally by what i've seen to actually try the game and play through it but i'm sure that like it's fun to play and that the storytelling justifies whatever flaws this game may have but as a viewer to like retain my attention in your chat it, it has nothing to do with you it's just yeah. the game is just not it's not interactive Boring. it's not entertaining it's just there's nothing for me to see it's just icelandic landscape for forever on and your baby crying because you're moving too fast and then there's too god. much to throw and it's like <laughs> oh my god <laughs> yeah what is, what is that about it's baby like crying, literally... you lost me you know <laughs> The in, the entire it's like the entire map is like the literally the entire United States, right? Like it's a I huge so. map. Why does it all look fucking identical? <laughs> From the east coast all the way to the west coast, the landscape is identical. Yeah. Which I, I don't I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> yeah. it. Well, it, it's 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 a very beautiful landscape to it look is. at. No, yeah, it is. I'm not saying anything negative about that. Just, just for like, every... you know, <laughs> that first four hours that you play it, like there's literally a desert in the middle of the United States. Can we can we add that? <laughs> no, everything's gonna be this this weird like you know, taiga esque kind of landscape. Okay. Yeah, looks straight out of Iceland. Honestly, it does, and it's like yeah, it, it straight it's up does. Very well done environment. The game looks gorgeous. Just looks cold. But <laughs> oh, yeah. Eventually, you just want to look at something else, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, I think that about covers everything we wanted to uh, talk about. Oh, yeah, that, about. That pro that, that's probably a podcast. We there's probably some <laughs> yeah, semblance probably. of, of yeah. like a topic in, in there. Over two hours, we probably have. To yeah, we it. nailed it. We did it. <laughs> podcast <laughs> accomplished. <laughs> Achievement. You podcast for two hours and talked about almost nothing. Uh, Xbox achievement. <laughs> 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 but uh no, no. Thank, you. thank you thank you for joining thank us you. this was this was a uh, lot of fun we, and, and i will say this 
we got to talk about something that probably Scoy and I would literally never like have the opportunity to talk about, which is like the movie industry and stuff like that. Yeah. And I mean, I, I hope you enjoyed talking about it too, because you kind of gave us a really unique perspective on that. So thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you for having me. That was a big honor. And uh, every yeah, opportunity really? I yeah. have to talk. Oh yeah, dude. Like the thing is, is I don't, I'm not sure people understand this, but for me, that wasn't even streaming like four months ago that actively consume most media around Monster Honor and the content creators podcasts Phil, I've seen you on how many podcasts now? You, I feel like you co-host a lot of podcasts, which is great for you, honestly. Yeah. Uh, but it's a different dynamic with everybody, and it's just mm -hmm. to be included in something that I used to consume as just a viewer is just amazing. So thank you for oh, having me. Sweet. That was great. Of course, you get to watch me every get time. bullied every podcast. It's great. <laughs> Oh, get my him. Like, 50% me or 50% my cats just uh, walking around and yeah, yeah no it's do, great do a podcast <laughs> with jitsu and Faye is fucking amazing because they're um well they have a lot more life experience and everything so it's just like for me i haven't seen a lot of shit i haven't done a lot of shit so they're always making fun of me because i haven't done any of this <laughs> <laughs> You're still Here's young. You get to experience face. that stuff. I'm 23. <laughs> yeah, you're still young. Yeah, no, I didn't mean that as I'm old, but I mean, I'm just like, our yeah. age difference is not that far. <laughs> no, For you and age? I, no. Oh, no. me, I'm 27. Oh, we're the same age then. Yeah, yeah. 27 too. That's, that's fine. <laughs> four years is not that bad. Come on. No, four no. Years if I would have been like 35 and you're like, I'm 23, I would have been, oh, baby. <laughs> oh, baby. I'm 47. <laughs> <laughs> I shave and I look 12 again. Yeah. <laughs> but... My superpower. No, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be young forever. <laughs> the thing that uh, we usually like doing with our guests is that for right now, this is kind of like a season one. We're building up all the guests right now. And then later on, we bring them back. And if you're interested in coming back, that'd be absolutely amazing we can drag on with another guest uh, that we had previously and kind of just like have us all talk about things that's our plan yeah, with this podcast that'd, that'd be awesome yeah yeah <laughs> sweet hell yeah but if there's anything you well, would guys, like to plug about yourself yeah. let us know uh wow i'm not gonna spell my <laughs> channel oh, and my, my twitter don't worry it's it's it'll all be in the stuff. it'll all be in so the links below in the links uh I casually stream on Twitch, uh, Monster Hunter Variety. You can follow me on Twitter for some art and other offline stuff. And I just opened my print shop too. If people want to buy yeah. things of the art I do, uh, the link's going to be below as well, I assume. But yes. uh, yeah, keep in touch with me. <laughs> my, uh, my, my staircase needs some artwork. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have to put a discount code. So oh, me. hell yeah. <laughs> That hell insider, yeah. that insider yeah. discount code. <laughs> hell yeah. But awesome. Yeah. Thank you guys very much for watching. Dear very much for listening. If you're listening on Spotify, where everything will be linked in the description below. Thank you guys very much for watching. Benji, thank you again for being our guest for this podcast. And we will see you all in the next one. Goodbye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Have a good breakfast. <laughs> Put us in your mouth. No. <laughs> yeah. Stop saying that. <laughs> no.